Houston, uh, on Quality Base is the Eagle has landed. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien. Ad a a, a I nearly said Ananoid. Um, welcome to Alien Addict on this fine and uh, bizarre evening, because it is bizarre. Because we're going to talk about Mister Bizarre himself, Bob Lazar, and uh, his um, his his final tapes have seem to have come out. But I think we probably may get some more down the pipeline. So, without further ado. I want to bring on the guest to talk about the man that keeps on giving to the world of ufology rich jordana welcome to the show hey, my friend how you doing man thanks for having me on we're going to talk lazar one last time <laughs> just just one more the final story that's sure it. sure that's it one last I'm time i'm down rich northwood welcome to the show my friend morning or evening well, oh, and what what is it you boys say? Two dicks are better than one. Indeed. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What we like. Speaking of dicks. <laughs> Lee, oh, I Lee. thought you were going to go the other way. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with the next one. That would have been funny. <laughs> no, I would. I would. I would, I would never be as rude as you, Rich. Oh. I just, I just well, that's awfully rude. Right out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? All right. I deserved it somehow. I something I said two years ago. That was when we first actually know it wasn't. Oh, don't do that again. Okay. Hey! What's alien up, guys? <clears throat> what's up, The alien? alien. The Alien Girl 111. Thank the you. Thank you. The Lady of UFOlogy. Thanks for mm. letting me come on the show. I always like hanging out with the boys. Well, we were just saying before, I, I had a big apology because you were meant to be on last week's show. And I completely... Oh. Just didn't send the link like a dick. <laughs> what a uh, happens, it happens, it happens. She was washing her hair anyway. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I forgot. Thank you, Rich. I remember. You, Rich. I was there. I remember what happened. Yeah. So yeah. no problem. I was busy. <laughs> so as, as everybody, uh, apart from Leaks, I don't know if he, I sent him the link, but I bet he hadn't watched it. Did. Uh, you did watch it. I did watch so it. We, has everybody seen the, uh, listened to the the tapes the new tapes of bob lazar i listened to the second one but is there a... that's all the, that matters. the second yeah, one is yeah. a lot more interesting the first one just is just okay. about the the model um mm -hmm. which I, I, i'm gonna buy that model can you still get it does anybody know if you can still get the model mm -hmm. sports model no i'm Maybe. well i'm open to sponsorship just putting that out there <laughs> um I'll have to... Speaking of uh, sponsorship, I just want to say a big thank you. They can't make the show, people. A lot of people thought that Corbell and uh, Lazar himself would come on the show. No, but they they did uh, respect the free T-shirt that I sent them. Um, nice. So, so there you go. Not photoshopped at all, I promise. <laughs> um, my, 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 I, my wife says, you need to make a disclaimer here that you've photoshopped that because that's, I can't remember what she said. She gave me some sort of... Uh, she says you, you could get sued. I, I, I said, you know what? If, if Bob Lazar and Corbell want to sue me, that would be amazing because that was something <laughs> to talk about. Right. <laughs> but I have to say, well, no, actually, I'm not going to. My opinion comes last. It's about the people. What do we think to the tapes? Uh, oh. Ladies first. Oh, Thank you. Um... <clears throat> Hey, hey, he's talking about me, Rich. I, Rich, I, I identify Rich. as a female for that question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. joking. Do you, go wanna, ahead. do you want to take it then? Oh, okay. I have no idea what I'm going to say. You go. Well, Rich was going to speak, but then I kind of spoke over him before because I didn't think anybody was going to speak. So I did review both sets of the uh, Bob Lazar tapes that have recently been released, found through what sounds like a friend of Michael Schratt. And in reviewing this information and listening to it, it gave me more of like an in-depth understanding of kind of how the vetting process for 
Bob Lazar, uh, like how that laid out. And I think what hit me in the first little recording that I listened to is I was um, very surprised that the when they were trying to find him and they were like asking all of his friends about who he was and like what he liked to do, that they actually had ended up finding out right that he had like caused an explosion in his house. Like he had done something wrong and they had figured that out and they were they had figured out some weird childhood crazy thing that he had done. Um, and they were asking his friends about it. And then the second one was awesome. <laughs> like you were saying, like the breakdown of the particle and how does this work? And there's a little bit more in depth about the mechanics of, of the saucer. And um, I like that. And I always like listening to Bob Lazar talk because he's just so calm. He's so cool. He's so collected. You know what I mean? Like you're just sitting there and you're just trying to listen for lies. But the guy just, he doesn't sound like he's lying. This fits in into multiple, it's the Bob Lazar thing. So that's what I got. I could keep going and going because it is it is one of those things that you can just keep talking about forever because there's so many facts to bounce off of each other that I, I, I you know, I love Bob and I'm so like, I do believe in him. But then there's... Um, you know, still a day or two every once in a while. I'm like, do I believe it? Oh shit! But, but yeah, I liked the I liked the tapes. It's always nice to hear more. <coughs> Nothing bizarre. burger. I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. It was fine. <laughs> Rich and when you you want to speak for? Oh no, go go. go, go. No, not go, me. Go. I have nothing to say. Well, from from what I saw, he he would start to talk about something. Let's say, for instance, he would talk about. Um, uh, radioactive materials and then he would immediately fork into sort of schoolboy stuff about um, uh, uh, decay and um, oxidization and things like that so so he, he would he would tell us something about the actual um, the thoughts in his mind that are about the craft and then he'd immediately fork off into something that you could read in a, a any sort of like textbook or or stuff about elements that are around at the moment uh it seemed to me like he was backing up every every little story that he got with a piece of um uh like a something that he'd gleaned from a chemistry book or something like that it seemed to me that he didn't particularly have anything else that you could actually grab onto and say that that's real. Um, but thinking a bit further, talking about element one, 116, was it 115, 15. 116? And it, and it turned into 116 when it got bombarded. Um, all of that, all of that stuff doesn't really stand up to scrutiny uh, either. I, I, I don't think that thing would work the way he described it. I mean, for instance, so he talked he talked about generating an antiproton and and it would fly into a gas and it would annihilate and they would get energy from it and they would use that energy to power the craft. Um, so the amount of energy that it would take to create that proton would be the same energy that would be released. Sorry, that antiproton would be the same energy that would be released when it annihilated with another uh, proton. So, so really, you might as well use the stored energy to power the craft. Why create a load of antiprotons to then annihilate them to make, make the same amount of energy that it took to create the antiprotons in the first place? I'll, I'll be honest with you, Rich, with that sort of stuff, that goes straight over my head as soon as you talk about protons. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Josh and Artemis, yes, uh, we will be on the show on Sunday, can't wait for that. And thank you so much, guys. Doesn't matter that you can't make it. You're in the chat, and I know you. You've got the little ones to look after. Um, sorry, what was you going to say, my darling? Me, right, you right, me. I don't know. So it, it, it was either you or Rich at the top that coughed. <laughs> sorry, I've stunned the audience, haven't I? I apologise. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, this I, is what I, they want. They want actual somebody who's actually in the know, and I am going to clue. I'm with Ali, um, Rich. You just made me feel very stupid. Um, what I I gleaned from listening to it 
was it goes back to that old story, doesn't it? And this, this doesn't mean I believe him or, or not, really. It, uh, I don't think there's anything there that will all of a sudden make somebody that doesn't believe Bob Lazar's story believe it. Um, but what I will say for him is when, when were those recordings supposed to be done? 32 years ago, 1990. Right. That could be him speaking today. No, that's not him speaking. To no, 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 no. I know it's not. I was not. thinking the same thing. But what I mean is the way he's speaking and the way oh, he's yeah. speaking about things, it might as well be him saying that on the Joe Rogan show next yeah. week. Um, and that at least leads to some sort of consistency. Now, is that consistent bullshit? I'm not, I, I don't know, but it is consistency. Yeah, 100%. His voice hasn't changed a, a jot. Quite weird that actually, isn't it? I, it I, is. I noticed that too. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Would you like? Do you know what the weirdest thing about that is? For as I'm sure all of you know, that um, as soon as you start doing any sort of like, uh, for want of better words, performance type stuff, like we do, be it podcasts or YouTube shows and stuff like that, um, I think you learn more about your voice because you hear it back an awful lot. Your voice changes. You end up rounding words off and stuff like that to make it sound and feel a bit nicer in your mouth when you when you're speaking. Um, I find it weird that he's done so much speaking over the years and he hasn't, that hasn't changed. You know, he hasn't changed the way he, de he delivers information because he doesn't particularly deliver information in a good way either. So you, you'd think he'd have at least got better at s selling the snake oil. Has he, has he done that a lot though? Or does he just show up, do a video or something like that and everybody watches the video? I right. think he's done uh, it enough. I, I don't know. He's done very little as far as talking on the circuit way back when. Mm -hmm. Very, no, no, very but, little. But I think he's done enough. He's done enough to where you think he would have changed how he delivers things. Mm. I don't know. I don't yeah, know him. Possibly. Yeah, you'd have to get a baseline read on his personality. Mm -hmm. well, 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 Mr. George, I know you, you, were, you were coughing, but <clears throat> mush it. And what have you. Mr. Catfish, thank you so much. The corporation ants are shit. That's gone over my head, but I get it. Uh, and Tic Tac, uh, that 115 triangle sounds spooky like a uh, Dorito. Is that how you spell Dorito? Is, I have no idea how you spell yeah. Dorito, but yep, it does sound spooky. Rich, you see, thank you so much for the super chat, guys. I really appreciate it. I love you all very much for supporting the show. Um, Rich, you are you calling bullshit on this? No, I'm not calling bullshit, it's just nothing new. Uh, you know, you just hear a little more details about some things. You know, he took an extra step inside or instead of looking left, he looked right. You know, it's nothing really significant to say, holy shit, he actually worked there. I can't believe it. It's just 32 year old tapes that nobody's ever heard. That's all. And it's pretty much 98% uh, of it is what we've already heard. And the other 2% is just an addition to what he's already said. So uh, although I like it because it's old, it's nostalgia, it's Bob Lazar. I just, you know, eh. Who was it was it? good. Was... I mean, I wanted more, to be honest. You, you may get more. I mean, this, well, there's this, more this... coming tomorrow. Ten more minutes, and that's it. Oh, can can make another thumbnail. Uh, the uh, I don't know what I'd do with that one. I want to hear him say something I haven't heard, like you know, something different. It would be nice is if he dropped the Antarctica thing, for but mm. 32 years ago. That'd be nice. That'd be kick ass. Yeah, like that. Hmm. Exactly. I, I don't think we're going to get that. No. no, I don't. No. Given his dues, though, he hasn't. He hasn't uh, decided he wants to change the world, and he hasn't decided that um, he can speak, to, talk to aliens with his mind, and uh, all He's, the other stuff mm -hmm. that uh, that's been claimed elsewhere. You know. Uh, you have to hand it to him. He's, he's he's stayed pretty grounded and true to the original story. You know, that's just him, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's him. I, yeah, I I think this last tape, though, that, by the way, people, it is over on Third Phase of Moon's channel. They put it out today. Um, I think this last tape was a, a lot more interesting than the, than the tape just before that that was talking about the model. <clears throat> Who is he actually speaking to, though? Who are the guys he's speaking to? Do we know that? Yeah. I forget the name of the guy. They say it in the beginning of the first segment, the first video they put out. I forget his name, but he's dead now. I'll, I'm looking it up now. I'll find it. Right. 
so, because Bob spoke in that second tape about somebody who they were trying to get to verify. I think it was he was either another scientist or somebody he worked with at so and so, and he says he said we've got in touch with so and so, but he's not backing any of this up. And he says, yeah, I don't know why he did, why he isn't. I'll I'll kill him. Like as a joke, did he say I'll kill him? Or he said something along those lines. Like I'll I'll get him for that. But he says he's probably got good reason not to. Like somebody didn't back him up, and I've, I I literally listened to that tape because I couldn't listen to it today at work, and I listened to it on the way home while I was driving. And a couple of knobheads were peeping the horn. His I drive is, like an idiot. His name is John Andrews. That's the guy who's speaking to them. To speak to Bob. That's the guy who got who did the recordings with Bob Lazar. That's the guy who handed the tapes over to Charette. Or his that, wife. I think his wife gave it to him after he passed away, gave it to Charette 30 years ago. Because that last tape, they sounded like there was about uh, another three people in the room with Bob. He it didn't sounded like there were more than... A, yeah, there were a couple people. I remember two or th two voices for sure besides Bob's that I heard during the interviews. I think there were two other people there. Yeah, at least two. Right. I Totally. Is there is there any chance, any chance whatsoever, that this is fake and been done recently? No, no, one hundred percent. This is real. Right. You um, if if you haven't watched part one yet, they show Michael Schratt with all the tapes and passing them off the uh, third phase of Moon and right. Okay, it was just audio. It was just the the audio I was listening to because I, I couldn't watch it. I was just listening to what Bob yeah. talked. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you see, they're, they're on those little DV tapes, you know, for little video recorders. Mm -hmm. And then they transferred them over to DVD in 1990. And then they hold up the DVD with the date on it, showing cool. John Lear does. But anyway, that's it. They're real. It's legit. Yeah. No, I was just thought with, with us saying he sounded similar. That was all. I sound the same in any year. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, generational. That's why. So I, I have a question for everybody that I just have, you know, um, what is the big fact, the big thing that people can't get over when it comes to believing in Bob Lazar? Like what it seems to me in this, it, it seems to me that people believe he did not work at, a, you know, he didn't work at Los Alamos. He didn't work at Area 51. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm not trying to be like, what's going on? I mean, I seriously, honestly want to know specifically what it is that, you know, because that's why I do this. That's why I jump into this. I want my little fantasies to be shaken out. And not, I want to know because there's been a lot of things that I've discovered by asking these questions. And what do you guys think? Like, what do you think the big thing is that proves that Bob Lazar is a fake, as some people say? Lots of inconsistencies. The badge that he has, it really doesn't match the badges that other people had that worked there. Um, Stephen Cambion did something on that and showed that. Um, inconsistencies about where it's located. Um, just a lot of stuff like that, like where he lived and it just like, okay, when Stanton Friedman was going up against him, he said... There was a guy I asked who worked there and said Bob <laughs> Lazar didn't even know where the bathroom was, you know. But then Richard Doty says, oh, yeah, he explained it, described it exactly. He was there. He worked there. So you got two people. Who are you going to believe, Doty or Stan Friedman? Stan Friedman doesn't know. He's never been there. He's just getting it on somebody else's word. So it's a very convoluted story, and I think he, uh, he might have worked there or told he worked there. I think this was, whole thing was a social experiment, just like Anjali. <gasps> Should I have said that? Say what you like, mate, on this show. Um, well, I know you want to get her on. That's why. No, you should, you should, listen, at the end of the day, with, with great claims comes great... Um, Responsibility. But deep, that's deep, the whole thing. Debunkers. <laughs> hmm. um, I, um, I think that... I think it was you that said this, Amy. The one thing with Bob, and I think I've heard you say it on your show, he sounds believable. He's, every time he speaks, he, it, it sounds like somebody who's telling the truth. It doesn't sound like a lie. My issue, to put that out there, is this. 
This is my issue, if, I can find, if I've still got it. Yeah, I've still got it. That's my issue. The flying saucer, it looks great. The flying saucer that looks like Billy Myers' flying saucer. That is my issue. It just looks uh, like a flying saucer, to be fair. Yeah, he looks like a flying saucer, but who reports flying saucers now? I can't remember the last time I've I've, I've seen a legit, or ever, uh, well, yeah. flying saucer. You know or, or what I've spoke said. to somebody. Yeah, but you, you know, like I've said on the podcast before, I'm I'm almost convinced that the what whatever UFOs are, they've been seen in the sky for thousands of years, and you know, like when when uh, you have reports of or like old stories of like say dragons or um, like chariots uh, of fire, th those sorts of things, I don't think that people uh, people in old times describing something the best way they can i think that's what they saw and for some reason i think these things show themselves in a lens that the people of the time can understand them so we're seeing we're seeing those things the like the black triangles for instance and stuff like that we're seeing those things because it's how we're perceiving them at the time, whereas in the 1950s, that the, the flying saucer was how we were perceive, perceiving them. I think these things have changed. I, I don't. That's it's one of the reasons why I'm not I'm not convinced that they're like extraterrestrial beings traveling billions of miles from a from a far far off galaxy. I think it's something completely different. So you're saying that the flying saucer, well, that whatever that this craft adapts. With yeah, the time to, to the to, yeah to the, um, it, or, or maybe not even the craft adapts. Maybe it's the the whole the whole idea of how we perceive reality. You know, it's maybe it's it's us, it's our collective consciousness making those things what what we want them to be at the time. We've spoken a little bit about that, haven't we, Rich? About the the crafts that we always seem to see them. The, the actual the, the the time period that it is whether it's in the 70s 80s 90s you know the now it seems to be that they they they're almost designed like like some, the cars yeah um, like the cars in the 60s you had the nice rounded cars the big ones and the ufos were kind of like that bubbly round billy meyer-ish yeah and then uh thank you and uh they had triangles back then, mm -hmm. right? Those are the same. Same with the cigars. Now they call them, you know, tubes or Tic Tacs. A hundred percent, I think this, the triangle is a thing. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's ours. I think but there's it, both. I think there's ET yeah. and human triangles. Yeah. It's... If... if <laughs> <laughs> to quickly touch on this, though, if you think about the easiest thing to chuck up in the sky and take a picture of or whatever, that would be the the UFO would be the shape of something that some I mean, look, at, maybe somebody chucked a discus back in the day and somebody just saw it fly by and went, bloody hell, have you seen that? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, look at that Hercules. I'll go get it. You know, you know I, I, it, it, it would be. Something that is something. I mean, even even that that classic scene in Back to the Future at the beginning, where you see the the flying saucer at the beginning, and all of a sudden a dog jumps up and bites it. It's a frisbee, mm -hmm. but you think it's a flying saucer. Rich, do you remember that in Back to the Future? No, did I say Back to the Future? Did mm -hmm. he say Back to the Future? He did. I, <laughs> I thought it. you did. I meant Flight of the Navigator. Oh, okay. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. You're right. I think it is. But, you know, that that means that we have the technology in our hands and we're just designing it the best way we know how. That doesn't make sense either. That would be weird. But it is true. Maybe it's because the sign of the times are the sign of the UFOs. Now we're in this digital age where everything's a chip or a tablet. And, and now we have something that looks like that. You know, the Tic Tac's the most popular mm -hmm. thing. I hate it. But, you know, it's it's out there. Well, you need to love it because it, it kind of gives us something to speak about. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I'd get I in think, trouble for saying the same thing. I um, think you've got something there, there, Rich, as well with the tech tic tac because when you look at the way we are um, designing consumer electronics now, it's all very like slot sharp, clean lines. You know, it's the the yeah. Apple design, for instance, has taken over consumer technology. So it's yeah, yeah. It, it it fits with what we've got. It fits with what we've got in our pockets. Are we making it fit though? Because if you just talk about oh, it looks like a car. You know, like in the 60s, what else would it look like? Nothing else. So we, mm. it's one thing out of a billion things that, oh, we found what looks like that. It's got to be why. See, I don't know, man. I, I I don't know. It's so silly. Why would they do that? It, why the would 50s they change? In the 60s. Yeah, right. yeah. Why, but what, if, if you're talking about something that can, let, let's just say, say, let's go with the idea that they're mechanical nuts and bolts craft that can traverse all all uh, all this time, time and space. Mm -hmm. Um where we would have to be looking at something that dealt with time the same way as people do for them to change their designs over the same period as what what where how we're changing our technology and i i just don't see that as a thing if you if you're the type of type of creature that can travel that distance i don't believe you're going to have the same like life to lifetime and same like perception of what what time and reality is so why would they change so much you would think you would think that the same ufo that was in the sky in 1700 bc was the same one we have today it might be maybe yeah i know maybe yeah we'll never know but if you look at those paintings the frescoes the the mm -hmm. artwork uh you do see top hats and discs and mm -hmm. triangles and everything we see today some it's of them look like billy Meyer ones even laser beams mm -hmm. shooting out of them. My God, I mean, that's wild stuff, man. But no, that's the sun's rays. Yeah. Usually when they do sun, it breaks out. You know, it doesn't go in a straight line like a laser mm. beam, you know. So I'm not buying that stuff. I will say this. If, let's just say Bob is making all this up and he did this for some bizarre, bizarre reason. Um, <laughs> bizarre, bizarre. Nice. I always find it crazy yeah. that his name's Lazar. It's you know such what a bizarre story. Bizarre. Comes yeah. from the word Lazarus. God helps us is what it means. Oh wow! Isn't that amazing? Oh. That's <laughs> amazing. But, and his name Robert is one of the most common names because he's like Jesus. He walks among common man. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> he's he's put here thing. for a reason. Mm. Skip school. He's a social uh, I mean, experiment. It's all subliminal stuff. This is what I'm telling you. What I was, what I was going to say. Those are, is, are out of the loop. Rich is drinking pure heroin tonight. This is actually <laughs> this is ayahuasca, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to be tripping in about five minutes. You'll what, I was gonna, what I was going to say is, if because Bob's an intelligent man, and I can't, as much as I say that I have a problem with the way this craft looks because of um, the Billy Myers story, okay? The, the classic UFO, um, the, the, which seems to have been <laughs> forgotten about other than the Bob Lazar story. I can't see why Bob would... He's a clever man. Why would he, why would he put such a stupid now, thing? Now you're talking. Because yeah. he was... Because he was put there because of John Lear's connection to UFOs, Area 51, and all that stuff. There's a connection. John Lear's yes, father was CIA. Okay. Capiche? Keep going. I'm, Keep going. Uh, I can't. I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> after that. Okay. I'm, I'm, that's a good point, continue. though. Go that's ahead. a good point. That's something that's come up with me. I've gotten fights on Reddit over it, and it all comes down to John Lear. Um, some with John Lear. Some with John Lear. Whenever I try to dig deep and get a good understanding, there's something with the secret with John Lear that is to unlock the Bob Lazar truth. And so I agree with you 100%. And I wonder where that goes. And I'm not even kidding when I say it's possible Bob Lazar could be his son. He, he would yes. have had him when he was 16 years old. Well, he wouldn't have had him. But <laughs> I, I saw you say this. that he had sex this with would have had him. This is great. Because they further. do look alike. <laughs> they got the same mouth, the same head shape. They they both wear glasses that look similar. They even talk in that calming 
you know, that magical voice place. that'll take you where two million people are living on well, all the planets. Know, and I am a good human. Thank you. <clears throat> you know? Who called but, you the human? So my point is, it's possible because of the connection through John Lear. And think about John Lear's father. He is the uh, the godfather. His father is the, the godfather of Lear Jets. Jet. Yeah. So mm-hmm. think about the technology that uh, they created and could have given to the government. Maybe they found this technology and said, let me, you know, my son, or I don't know if they said my son, but I know a kid who's brilliant. I've been watching him since he was born. And I put him through the right schools. This kid's a genius. He'll figure it out. I don't know. I'm not, I, don't, I have no idea. But I think it's weird that John Lear is connected to Bob Lazar and they're somehow connected. Right. I, I, it seems there's something going on because it seems like, OK, so this is what I've always been trying to uh, identify, which is when did we start to hear about Area 51 in the mainstream media? It appears to be John Lear, correct? He appears to be the first one who was reporting and then he got budsies with Nap, and then they started to go talk about area 51 was there anyone before them that were discussing area 51 because what's interesting about that is there was an area 51 when they were reporting on it it was completely denial it didn't exist so lear knew area 51 existed before the public was aware of this so at what point did the mainstream media start to discuss area 51 as I'm something to find legitimately that awesome yeah, that's a great. No, but that is a fantastic question, though. Right, I've always I, wondered. I've always wondered because you have that, you know, so that confirmed Area 51. And when I noticed when I noticed people started talking about Area 51 openly, it happened after the Julian Assange WikiLeaks that happened um, because they found an email in the WikiLeaks that included an email to Area 51. And from then on, it felt like the government was completely okay just discussing the fact that there was an Area 51. And that was the first official confirmation I ever was like, oh, okay, now we know. And then it seemed like everyone was like, yeah, there's an Area 51. And I was like, how did that get there? confirmed in the sort of early 2000s. I thought it was sort of acknowledged in like the early 2000s. And here I think, I thought it was in 86. The, uh, if, but but what what I'd say about the um, people talking about it is that the that military base grew, didn't it? And it started swallowing land. Oh up. yeah, yeah. So there would have been a time well before that where I'm sure ranchers and people that lived around the area would have been fully aware of the fact that there was a military base there. So if you've got a, if you've got a military base that you can see with your own eyes, and you can see trucks going in and out and planes planes going in, but it's not on any maps. That's the breeding ground of conspiracy theories already, isn't it? So I'm under the impression, um, and I'm probably totally wrong here. Again, I, I'm not a ufologist. I don't study the subject. I just like speaking to the idiots behind it. Um, <laughs> that Bob kind of put that into play when he was talking about S4 and Area 51. And it was already rumored, but then it started to get discussed more and more and more. I found I it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. I want, I want you to stop me 20, in my tracks, Rich. They found out it went public on June freaking thing. Uh, and it, 2013. That's interesting. That's not that long ago. It says the public that's found that out that ago. Area 51 officially existed in August 2013 after Dr. Jeffrey T. Richelson or whatever, a senior fellow at the George Washington University National Security Archive, submitted a Freedom of Information Act a FOIA request in 2005 for information on this. Well, I, I want to know when that's when they admitted it. I want to know when it was talked about first, don't you? Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. But who was the first reporter to break it? Who was the one who came out with this information, ran to the television stations and said, Area 51 exists? Because in Bob Lazar and the Flying Saucers, George Knapp says, it's the most requested video I've ever had ever in my whole life. Even people in Japan want to look at the video. So who had the information first? We'd really like to know because it seems like that information got everywhere in the world pretty fast. And it seems like the original holders of this information was John Lear and George Knapp. And somehow, you know, they got their friend Bob Lazar there. It, it's interesting for sure. 
we need to know how area where were the who who did they base this information off that area 51 exists you know and, and we have you know lee's discussing this a little bit well you know there's a little noise that happens in the area right so you know next door neighbors like i think and that that's very well possible too you know but it seems like we figured out the government and and what i like about it is it's one of those times where you can confirm they knew uh, and that's what's fascinating they knew it was hidden under belly that that revealed it to the world I, there we go i, I didn't want to say it i had a feeling we, we need to come on the you. show my friend and um, and for anybody in the in, in the audience, we do know it was S4 that Bob was working at, not Area 51. Uh, oh, that yeah. Is, yeah. Sorry about that. It, but, but I'm, am I right by thinking that it was Bob that kind of put that, that name, Area 51, into the, the, the populace? Wasn't it Stan Friedman, though? when they talked about the bodies from Roswell, when he was investigating Roswell, and he brought up, I know he brought up Area 51, that's not where the bodies were kept, you know, they were kept somewhere else, but uh, hmm, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I thought it was like 88, 89, as some tic-tac-toe said in the chat. I thought it was around that time when Bob came out, or Stan Friedman. Oh, I always click on the wrong ones. Hello, Carol, my love, love you. Carl Ann. Carl. 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 Was is there anything um, out there about when they started nuclear testing there? Maybe maybe in looking New for New Mexico. Yeah, yeah, because because that's what, what they would do nuclear testing, weren't they, in Area Fifty One? Right, I think it was nine. Well, New Mexico is different from Nevada, but they started the nuclear testing in um in New Mexico. It started in Alamogordo, at White Sands. You know, in that area was when they had the atomic bomb at the Trinity area yeah. so area 51 isn't in new mexico it's it's in um you know nevada yeah but that that's what i'm saying if if the, if there was any um talk of nuclear testing at that facility at, at all ever the um that might be where you find the first mentions of it maybe looking for the first mentions of it in ufo is all of ufology is always going to turn up the the later accounts of it there might be something much earlier on where there's talk. There's talks about doing some sort of tests in that area. Have you seen that area on on Google Earth, the nuclear mm -hmm. testing ground? Yeah, it looks like the surface of the moon. Mm. It's pretty cool out there. I went out there like a couple months ago. I'm a little confused oh. about that area. Um, did they actually detonate bombs with nuclear shit in it? Because wouldn't it be poison for ten thousand years over there? I don't know if it's just not like I think. I think in 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 general, it's a missile testing ground. I don't know if it was all nukes. I don't. Yeah, but people are saying you know when the S four flags were found up, you know, Papoose Lake area, whatever. People were saying, oh, it's all radiated. All the water over there is all radiated from all the bombs going off. I'm like, oh, I don't think so because nobody would live there. <laughs> well, I actually went to the nuclear museum yesterday, and this was kind of fascinating to hear. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it's weird that we're talking about this. Everything happens for a reason. So I went to the nuclear museum yesterday, and, you know, I had the guy, like, explaining nukes and stuff. And they were saying, like, so in America, because we have nuclear, you know, reactors and stuff to help power um, our, our country and our stuff like that, that mm -hmm. it's actually interesting because even if some of the, our stuff's different than like Russian nuclear reactors, like we have better regulations and rules. But anyway, basically what happens is if one of the one of our reactors kind of like went down, um, we really wouldn't have that much of a radiation issue. Uh, because we use the correct equipment and we follow the correct regulations in America. Um, and so they were saying that, like, we're probably come in contact with more radiation in a whole year than we would if we were in some sort of situation like that because they put all the stuff in place a little bit better. Anyway, the nuclear museum is kind of a propaganda machine, though. <laughs> that is also, uh, you kind of leave. But I met a NASA scientist yesterday who put uh, the rover on Mars. So we had a fun little conversation. But, but did you find out anything about the missile site or the testing area being using plutonium? 
did, did... I I think well if the Manhattan Project, you know, there's that footage of them dropping the bomb. I'm pretty no, sure that I was know. down in New Mexico. Uh, maybe yeah, they did it. Maybe they did it once, and then they were like, "Oh man, we shouldn't do this again." I'm pretty. But yeah, they... they detonated one. Yeah, there's. But I know they're I detonating them. That's not the point. <laughs> is was there nuclear shit in the bomb that would poison the fucking Earth for ten thousand years? That's what I want to know. Like, well, why is the, why? I don't think so. No, because I like roll through there and I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I go on road so trips sure. all the time. Past yeah, white yeah. tan missile base. I was like, cool. Look at that. Well, that's. Well, that's. I mean, I don't have radiation. <laughs> that's the problem I have with people saying, but they've tested all the thousand of them went off. Right, thousand tests. Did ten of them have nuclear shit in them? Because people are always talking how it's poisoned over there, but yet they got this whole military world living there. You see, here's the problem I have with with when people talk about aliens sleeping with humans. I guarantee that we, are, we we're like a, 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 an advertisement for uh, we're like the AIDS advert in the '80s. You know, aliens are like, "Do not sleep with them, motherfuckers, because you will you will die." You know, we are filthy. We are filthy. Yeah, you know, and we are probably very much radioactive compared to. Our, um, our, think, our, our fathers. I think the alien guys like the women a lot. I think they l enjoyed human <laughs> women a lot, actually, because in the Bible, right when you have the story about Saddam and Gomorrah and they come down and they're the angels and they're like, hey, or whatever, and all that stuff happens. A lot of ancient astronaut theorists believe that those angels <laughs> were, in fact, extraterrestrials that come down. And in the Bible, they say that the angels like to come down because they really like their ladies, you know? They really Talking like about the, the Nephilim. That's in the mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. the Nephilim, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, they the like their giants. ladies. They're earth ladies. They love them earth ladies. Who doesn't? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, so I don't know how the, maybe, the, maybe, maybe not the ladies. I don't hey, know. men are from Mars, aren't we? Well, well Greek, uh, Greek mythology is full of uh, the gods coming down and having mm -hmm. their way with uh, mortals. You know, so. Maybe aliens what? are more human than we think they are. Like, cause I mean, if if you get something with a screen on, we'll stick porn on it. So so maybe the aliens sort of look at us and go, "Can we? Uh, can we just? Can we fuck them? Yeah, I think they look, they look like we can fuck them." Well, really I mean, I think they for? have been for for freaking ever, man, for cent forever, like thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's been happening. They beam <laughs> us up. They get us knocked up. They put us back down. They take the little babies <laughs> out when we're sleeping. This is the female extraterrestrial issue, you guys, okay? Yes. And then you go up and you meet your little babies up in the spaceship and it's like sad, you know? Aww. How did we we get how did we get <laughs> from it's from, sad. From, I know. How did we get from this? And uh, not that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. How did we get from this to, alien sleep, to sleeping hybrid. with aliens? What is going on on this show? It's the circle of life. <laughs> It's just right. show in, in general. I'm now, I, what I, I do want to speak about, though, is the, the, the last recording. It seemed to me that he got a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the the things on that craft. The the injection mold. The, what did you call it? The the That's like injection mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a jello mold. Um, That's what he said. For the craft mm -hmm. itself. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a. It seems so bloody simple, though, doesn't it? It seems like the most simple piece, simple object ever. So stupid. I mean, mm. That's why I don't believe it now. See, now I don't believe anymore. Where's the screens? It. They just appear. You know, what are they doing? Sitting down without a seatbelt on. Know. I get it. The gravity keeps them all safe and sound. The all. Dragon's yeah, yeah. so slick, though. Like the, X, huh? the SpaceX stuff. The SpaceX stuff, stuff is way more slick than what we put up on Apollo. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I, mean, I don't know. I could see it looking really advanced. I could see it not needing buttons and holograms. God knows I get sick of carrying my phone everywhere. <laughs> but just, if you just, look at just, the way... looking, just looking at that diagram. Yeah, that's the one. Um, if if those are thrusters, then they're not very precise, are they? And they're not very no, they you know, move. Focus, yeah, but that's that's the whole thing. You know, you know if that's like shining a torch, you know. There's, no, no, there's, well, there's no there's... specific. No, there is. Mm -hmm. Bob explains how they work. Right. Yeah, it's not thrusters. It's um, 
Or is it magnetic? Gravity amplifies. Yes, yeah, 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 that's yeah, the one. Yeah. Thank but it's you, the I'm same. Hearing. It's the same thing. It's it, it, that the, he's saying that that they're pointed in a certain direction, and they they emit, uh, well, not thrust, but um, um, uh, gravity. They manipulate a gravity the bubble around them. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem precise enough that they're on these big cans and they sway like that, and and uh, it it moves it around like that. It's like concert it just, lights. It just doesn't. That's what it is. I know if you. Uh, it doesn't make I, I, sense to me that that three of them would be able to do it anyway. Yeah, I don't think that if you were making a bubble, you'd need breath. something above you. Yeah. Here's my question. Here, hmm. he he explains you know, seeing these things, how did he, did, I have never heard him explain how he got in that section of the ship, the bottom section with these. Mm, interesting. He said he poked his head down through the top. <laughs> there was a latch and he poked he his head and looked in it. Like, <laughs> you know, he stuck his head down and looked so around. Did he say there was a latch? <laughs> he did. He said, yeah, he he said there's a in. hatch. Okay. So w w what were the hinges like on that hatch? That's what I want to know. That's He's, the detail that I want. I want to know when those that when those things move, what he is said the hinge? There were none. It just he it just, just said it opened. Open. Yeah. yeah, and he, there right. was no sliding mechanism, <laughs> no latch, nothing. And it then just, he put his head in, and then yeah. he felt like there was static electricity, and he said it was too tiny for him to get that. in. And my glasses flew off. <laughs> <laughs> the, so these these uh, what Gosh, do they call them? gravity amplifiers? Mm -hmm. What do they call them? Is that right? Is that the, the technical word for them? Probably. I don't know. Anyway. Yes. They move around. Did he... Has anybody ever asked him? So in between that thing that looks like a uh, an internet box at the end of somebody's street that attaches the, gra the gravity amplifier on, <laughs> the, thi the thing that looks like uh, one of those things that you put in your ear, when your wife's talking to you on a night. Um, mm -hmm. That, what's in between that? Is he ever said what is in between the amplifier, the hinge, the thing that makes it move? I, I want to know the nuts and bolts behind this thing. He said that it's all like it's been injection molded, but he said that these, uh, those things at the bottom, the, the, the three little uh, tube, th three little gravity uh, amplifiers. Gra the gravity, yeah. Thanks, Rich. Those move. Has he ever? Has anybody ever asked him that the the little things that they're, they're attached to is there a moving mechanism? The ball there? joint area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle. Uh no, I've never heard anybody ask him that question. That's I'll a, get, I'll, that, I'll see that's a good said. question. Know, that is I'll a good question. Him. And and not only that, I mean the whole the whole craft is is pivoting on on these uh, three uh, gravity amplifiers, and there appears to be nothing in this model that suggests there's any reinforcement around them to resist whatever pressure uh, is is being brought to bear on on the craft between them. Almost seems like magic. Well, Weird science and freaking magic. Freaking magic. <laughs> maybe it is magic. Maybe that is very real, and and maybe literally that's what that craft runs on. Magic. It looks like bullshit to me. It is magic. You see the whole thing about element element one sixteen. Everybody sits mm -hmm. there and goes, "He he he predicted element one sixteen. He goes, "Well, no, he didn't." Is it um, sixteen it or fifteen? One fi 15. Sorry, one fifteen. He, he didn't predict it. There was there was gaps in the periodic table. There are still gaps. Uh, in, so imagine that that um, you've got you've got four houses on a road, okay, and they're numbered one, two, um, four, and five, and between two and four, there's a house shaped gap. Well, all lob Bob Lazar said was there's going to be a house in that gap, number three. That's all he did. We all knew mm. that there was that there was these gaps in the periodic table, uh, and elements of a certain weight would sit in those because that's how it works. 
But they um, already found Element 115. He he found it. It was in a science journal somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so what it was already about. being talked about and yeah. theorized yeah. and everything else. And it was it was only a little bit further down the line that, yeah, that they that they actually synthesized it, but it only appears for microseconds because it's yeah. it's so unstable. So yeah, here's the big question then: If Bob Lazar has done all this research, essentially, even if he's only got like pigeon science for it, uh, he's he's gone he's he's worked out that he can say the fuel source is this element one fifteen. He's made this whole thing about grav gravity bubbles that uh, can uh, can make the ships work. Uh, he's eventually got in touch with somebody to sh to promote this story that he's concocted. Why didn't he profit from it? Why did he go to all that effort? Well, cause did he, he profit from it? He, he, he likes to be. He likes to or be. Or profit more. Um, he likes he to be more? the center of attention. Right. I, I, I think it's as simple as that. Um, Narcissist. Well, mm. it's it, it it's about you know if if you're not if you're not very charismatic and and bless him Bob isn't very charismatic if you talk to him for, there's there's not much tone in his voice he's not very sort of animated as a person kind of good point. And, yeah. and and you know so what do you do you find other ways to make yourself interesting yeah you know that is you know that's a good little story to throw on a lady. Hey, does it work? Does it work you want to come to Area 51 and check out the flying saucer that I work mm -hmm. on, but I can't tell you about? And then you can go know. check out my rocket launcher and we can talk about whatever. Like, I mean, and yeah, that makes put, it more yeah. interesting. And he put jets on his bicycles as a teenager, yeah, you know, cool. and stuff like that. This is, look at me, I'm interesting, honest. Yeah. You know, I, you see, I he don't know about that. I, I... Or he was just a scientist. I, I just a cool mf -er. I think yeah. if he if he wanted his name up in flying colors and he wanted to, I think he could have been out there a little bit more. Mm, I, I mean, he's been he's been off the radar for for, for years. That's yeah, but well... he does little things, doesn't he? He runs that he runs that <laughs> annual thing in the desert where they go and let off fireworks and stuff like that. He, he still gets involved in 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 little things that he that probably makes those give fireworks. Him a little bit of, you yeah, mean Fourth of July. Don't they do no. that in the video in one of the documentaries? Yeah, I think he, I think he does make yeah. fireworks. I'm sure he does. Mm. There is yeah, no reason. I, I, I think he is charismatic in a way. Like the, mm -hmm. I know he, he comes across as being a bit boring, and he's got a monotone no, voice and stuff. But he's not no, boring. But that in, in the same way, <laughs> and he's got a crush. I know, I just, Bob Lazar plays with like rockets and he's really cool. Like he's a cool dude, you know? Like he just seems like cool. Like he'd be cool. He just says there cool you go. But stuff if he with didn't, a boring game. If, if he didn't play with rockets and if he didn't talk about <laughs> aliens, you would walk past him in the street when you exactly. Exactly. Lee, what were you no, saying? No, but Lee? he's got he gets a lot of yeah. I was just gonna say that it's 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 a popular trick, isn't it? Like a um a conversational trick it, you always think that the best way to get people to listen to you is to like speak loudly and clearly and it's not the best way at all the best way if you're in a circle of people to get them says to who is to, fucking i thought you'd gone uh is to um <laughs> is to speak really quietly and essentially really dull because it forces people to listen to you because it, it forces them to concentrate on what you're saying um so in that respect i do i do think he's got some sort of charisma um, I, but I see no reason when you think of like the build up he had back then, because I, I, I was only young when um, when that when I found out about that, it must have been like, I was I was about 10, I think, something like that. And um, what the, the build up he had from coming out, doing that interview, like work like it was a blank face to then having the next in interviews he did where you could see the person. There was no reason why he couldn't have ran with that. Especially, uh, he was at the the very beginning of the birth of the internet, where people could write their own stories without being fact checked on them. He could have been huge. He could have been doing exactly what, um, uh, what's his name, that your man that was going to build the cars. Oh, well, uh, uh, David, Musk. David, David Wilcock. Wilcock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have he could have peddled the same bullshit as Wilcock. Because there's a there's a man that's ugly that is also not charismatic, but the um, 
he didn't. Yo, it's and he. Go, sorry, go on, Rich. Well, I was gonna say the reason he probably didn't go make money. Let's say he really did work there and his life was threatened. Why would you want to keep poking the bear if that's really why? Well, that points to the fact that maybe he was telling the truth. Right, yeah, I know. I know. I mean, Bob Lazar split right down the middle. Mm. Lee Guy, thank you so much for the $9.99 super chat. I really appreciate that. In 1988, on a TV special, UFO cover-up live one of the anon- anonymous, anonymous, um, what's that say, Rich? Av- Aviary? A- Aviary guys, probably Doty, talked about a base in Nevada desert. This was before Bob came out with his story. When did Bob come out with the story? When was Dennis? 89, when was, I think. Was it 89, Dennis? I think so. Right. Mm. I'll Google it. I feel confident about that. I think you're right. It was 89. Yeah. Uh Lee, I know what you're saying there because I, I'm with you on that. I, I think Bob, I don't think Bob does come across as somebody who, it doesn't seem like, it seems like when he's, when he's in front of an audience, yeah, he will, it, he'll speak, but he doesn't come across it as a, as he doesn't come across as a show off or somebody who wants to be in front of the camera. Think so of the money he could have made. Let, what does he do when he's let off the leash? Then he goes and gets involved in brothels. You know. Um, well, I don't. I don't blame the guy for that. You know, if he wants to make money that way, that's yeah. that's. What's wrong with that? That's it's legal up there. If he did it legally, but uh, I guess he didn't do it legally. And he was just pandering, which means that you're just, you know, uh, hiring out a prostitute. That doesn't mean you're pimping. Um, Pimping's totally different. That's like a network of women that work under you that you pressure and put in bad situations. And it's border like sex trafficking. Pandering is simply saying, hey, you know, let's do a little trade here. And, you know, mm-hmm. so um, and it, it, was it legal in Nevada? No, it's just gotten legal in Nevada. Right. Like the last five years, I think. You could the own a brothel industry. for many years. You just have to do it in a certain part of Nevada. I, I'm not allowed to speak negative about brothels because my dad was in the Merchant Navy, so it probably just... Oh. Well, that's all right. You know who your dad is, though? I've... I think so. <laughs> right. um, but, what, but what was the computer work? He wanted to help his lady friends with the computers. I'm, I didn't... What he... <laughs> yeah, there's something about said. helping the ladies with the computers to get more business like this was that's part all of it was about that's the all charges it. too i think wasn't that it i don't know just let's a not, nice guy just yeah. a let's not, not, and let's not forget, also, sorry rich go on no no you go ahead no you go ahead let's not forget <laughs> that bob lazar's ex-wife died Right. Under mysterious circumstances. And I think his, another per- woman died that he was in a relationship with. So two women died mm. that were dating Bob Lazar. In Bob's defense, I know a person who has had three wives die. Like for a while. They're two from liver <laughs> failure. One got washed into the sea and I nicknamed him the Black Widow. But um, so it can happen. Wow. Yeah, but to a guy like Bob Lazar, uh, that's kind of weird. I think they murdered his family. They murdered them to make a point. I don't know. Maybe not. (laughs) I just think it's interesting. That's all. I mean, the guy's really surrounded with a lot of controversy. He is. He's he's an enigma, isn't he? You know, Mm -hmm. and and you can look at things a certain way and go, yeah, and it can be seen in so many contradictions. And that's the problem. (laughs) So why pick someone so extroverted like him or not ex- extroverted, eccentric, yeah. right? Like they, they, they vetted him. They asked his friends a bunch of questions. He was crazy. He caught his cat on fire. Whatever the hell happened when he he's was younger. Recluse, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got these rockets. Like why pick that dude for the top secret project? I think you met, isn't he's that erratic. Expendable. Isn't that unpredictable? Isn't it kind of show that like, we don't know what he's going to do next. Is he going to build a rocket? Is he going to catch his cat on fire? If Wait, he's clever. He- geniuses tend to be eccentric yeah we are (laughs) (laughs) we're using the word picked do do you think he was picked yes hand picked of course i think that's why 
He yeah. didn't just fill out an application. <laughs> I didn't yeah, apply. He was, <laughs> was handpicked to uh, log log uh, radiation badges. That's what he was handpicked. Yeah, I'm I'm not getting at that. I, I'm getting at the picked as. Do you think he's? So I've heard you say this before, Rich. That you think that Me? Bob Lazar. Yeah, you think that Bob Lazar was maybe picked out, and what he actually was working on was pure and utter bullshit. You think that he, Bob Lazar, believes that he was working on possibly a uh, flying saucer. Well, re- right. And remember what he said when he first went in there. He, they put him in a room and gave him these booklets that had pictures in them. And he was looking through them and came across pictures of aliens and crashed stuff. And he's like, what is this? Some sort of test? You know, he didn't know what he was getting into. And then they put him in a room. He sees Some saucers up along the wall lined up, counted nine of them. One of them had a flag on it, you know, and maybe he thought they were trying to make it look like it was back engineered. And then he said they were archaeological finds. I mean, there was a lot of stuff he said, too. Um, I don't know, man. The guy saw a lot, made a lot of claims. But how do you get any evidence out from that? It's I think he was chosen. I think he was there to... I think he was set up with John Lear to go out into the desert and try to get this stuff on video to get caught, to make it go public and maybe get a story out there and see how the public feels about a secret alien base or a secret base with alien stuff in it. You know, just put feelers out and see what the public thinks about it. It doesn't it seem like they do that every 10 years. There's always something like this that comes out. And and yeah, you're like, yeah. what the friggin'ometry is going on here? It's like, yeah, why say reason, this? Huh? Sorry to interrupt. The, no, no, no. The, the reason why he went and broke this was because he'd found out about his his wife was having an affair. No. Or something like, well, they or, tapped or his lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some... And, and, fa- and, that, and they thought that he it would be a problem that he would have home problems and it would interfere with his work. He wouldn't concentrate. So, so he, he, <laughs> so how, how do you engineer so that, so that he would all of a sudden run and blab to the press in that scenario? It just does not make sense. No. It, it's um, very, very hard to fabricate that scenario for somebody I, to go into. I think it would be very easy. I think it'd be very easy if to... he had help. No, no, no. But if if you if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to get somebody to go out and <clears throat> essentially tell the story you've peddled, um, you could find a person with those personality traits that you, that you know can't keep their mouth shut. You know that 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 you know w- w- wants a bit of fantasy, wants a bit of excitement, hmm. and then you just you just lead them down a role playing game. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. Has well, anybody what, what, asked Bob? Hmm. What's what, that? You, what, has anybody ever asked Bob if he thinks that he was um, no possibly hmm. working on something on that was on bullshit? Yeah, but he but has element one fifteen. Remember? Yeah, just, how many people have talked to him? Joe Rogan and Jeremy Corbell. What other interviews? George has Bob Lazar done? George Nath. Okay, yeah. Tyler. He talked to Tyler. Security yeah, team, yeah. I wouldn't call that. When did he talk like... to Tyler? Exactly. There was an in, it, it, He was. I think he was on. Uh, I think he was on Security Team Ten before Rogan. I believe. I think right. He was yeah. Right. Right. That all kind of came out in the YouTube world a little bit too. A lot of the original Lazar stuff I remember listening to came on through YouTube. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I'm like I'm trying to remember where I remember like the first time I heard it, like, and I think it was Bob Lazar was like Third Phase of Moon or Security. Maybe I just don't remember what the hell's going on anymore. By the but, way, Rich, Tic Tac Toe says you got to speak like Bob for the rest of the show. Thank you for the it's super not chat, easy my friend. To do that, man. It's not I, that I imagine on the the, the tall vocals, but yeah, Amy, um, Tyler interviewed him. I think it was about it was a few months before Rogan. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and he and when I interviewed uh, Tyler, he actually said, uh, "Jeremy, go fuck yourself," because he, he said that he used him to Aww. just to get his movie out. Of course, that sucks. 
That sucks. He said, he said, he said, uh, Jeremy, you never asked how I was when I was in hospital, blah, 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 blah. Uh, go fuck yourself. That's what he said. Aww. So, he... there seems to be some uh, beef there. Well, Corbell's an asshole. <sighs> He's the worst person in ufology right now. Worst he was Lou. Nah, Lou's much better than him. But, you know, a close second. I have to say he was very polite to me when he, you know, when I told you ages ago that Carl Bell was in, in, in touch with me, Rich. Um, of course. He was, he was very nice uh, as, when I started to speak about Bob. And I didn't speak about Bob in a negative way. I, I, I had a few questions out there and he sent me this really nice email. saying, I love your work. Um, you, uh, you've, you've got a lot of um, stuff. Charisma. Na- n- yeah, na- yeah, charisma. Of course I have. Uh, nailed on the head, but there's a few things you're quite wrong about. I will speak to you about this. What's your What's your personal number? I gave him my personal number, and then he spoke to me again. And then we, I asked him for an interview, and then he went quiet on me. So, because he saw you, that you were friends with me, probably. <laughs> Rich, why do you do this to me all the time? You just just <laughs> blow every single opportunity that I get, motherfucker. What you don't realize is that you're too cro- close to the truth and Rich is your handler and he's just acting as gatekeeper. I've had many people ask me That's to, to just say, say, why, you know, if you, when you're working with him, I won't work with you. You know what? I say, fuck you because I ain't You still this. keep I, sending me the fucking invites. Because I'm getting a goof on tattoo right here. <laughs> no, don't do that. I don't even you're have a tattoo. Say, it's going to be goof on for life. All right. Then I'll get, uh, I'm an addict for life. Oh wait! Oh, <laughs> no, no do, do, do you know what, Lee? Lee, if if, if you're getting pissed enough, we'll get anything tattooed to his body right Ooh. now. I've got, I've got loads to get done on got my a fetish for it. He's got a for fetish ten thousand dollars. I'll get it. if somebody <laughs> donates ten thousand. I'll get a tattoo of their choice. <laughs> Rich, wow. just remember the super. Every so often, just just respect the super chat, at Rich. That's Every exactly so <laughs> It's not that easy Perspective to talk like this guy. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. It's a good imp- impression. Imp- 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 I don't think it is, actually. I don't really? Yeah, I don't hear it like you people do, maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I could tell when I do something spot on, but uh, not too happy with it. He's but question. I do it for the people. Like, yeah. for you, We're for you happy. Guys. We're grateful. As long as they're happy, <laughs> dick. Hey. Right. Like for you guys that have been doing this like a lot and like I'm for a long time. Um do you ever think that we you've essentially well we've essentially fell for what we were supposed to fall for? Because if you if you look at like the key key moments like Roswell and then we'll say Bob Lazar as well for bringing it into pop culture. So you had like the Bob Lazar thing that came out and then almost instantly after the Bob Lazar thing, or with it within a couple of years, you had the X Files drop. And then everything went through the fucking the fucking roof with this sort of stuff. And essentially, the way we talk about things, because we're all the same sort of age, is heavily influenced by the X Files at that at that time. Do you think we're sat here, interesting, all these years later, talking about exactly what we were supposed to be talking about? And it's it's, yes. it's just all, all been programming. Yes, yes it's the, the slow is, disclosure process. Why? I believe it. Or is it disinformation? I think it's the slow disclosure process. That's kind of what I'm talking about tonight on my show, uh, that the media will tell us what we're going to talk about. The media, the elite media for that. Yes, Rich. Yes. That's what Cosmic America is about. That's what that whole book is about, how we no longer have religion as an authority. and Instead, it's actually the media. And it's interesting um, to what you're saying lee because in the book they actually like get in a car ride and somebody like blindfolds them and takes them way down deep into the desert in new mexico and when they get out they're like holy shit this looks like the scene from the x-files and the guy who brought him there is actually is this is where they filmed it and this is also where this crash is at and we're gonna try to find some alien stuff that happens in the book cosmic america (laughs) wow yeah i think you're right about the media i mean you, you, you you look at it now you walk down the street and uh, everybody's just oh, oh i support the latest thing you know mm-hmm. and uh, you know what it was it was the c word a while ago now it's mm-hmm. the u word 
Corbell. You know, I support the latest thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's how it's always been. It's just... No, it's not like this, it is now. It's, no, it's, do you know why? It's still well in. Yeah, you know why, though? Because now... Social there's media. Big, there's a huge... They've never had that weapon, and they've got mm. that weapon now. We're part of yes. that weapon. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. We, under, we underestimate ourselves. I'm just going to yeah, throw that out eight. there. We underestimate ourselves. Like, we're talking, like, why doesn't Bob Lazar go out and talk to a bunch of people? Well, guess what? We know a lot of people in our community who have stories, and they're willing to share them on any freaking platform any single day. They don't care. You want to go there, they'll be there, they'll tell you. And that's mm -hmm. just something to think about. Like, we, I think we underestimate the power of our little network. I really do. And I think there's some big sh stuff going on. And that's why I'm going to go talk about it on Twitch. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say we need to be we need to be careful Shameless when we plug. when we're talking about yeah. Go go check Amy out on Twitch. Twitch. Uh, Amy, I've only got the YouTube channel below, but I'm sure she's got a Twitch um, that there. And also, uh, Lee will talk about some of this stuff that we're not supposed to speak about on Alien Addict on Lee's show because Lee just doesn't give a shit. He's ready nice. to. He just wants yeah. to. He's just testing he just it. Just wants to see the world. Always though. testing it. Fingering it. it. Not fingering mm -hmm. it, but you, you know. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Rich. <laughs> How you doing? Do you want to get fingered? <laughs> Where's the? Oh, I see the dog's tail. I think right there. Oh, the dog. Yeah, yeah, he's over there. Well, you know, uh, you Bob Lazar Just... is real. It's definitely oh, real. It's real. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. phenomenon is real. He is a but, human. <laughs> but what would be the purpose of him going? public to save his life that's why he said he went public right he never know, made like, any money according well we don't know if he made any money from uh corbell's movie but i'm sure he did i'm sure he but did. if he I mean, let's just say so what would he's just an egomaniac and he just likes having his name talked about i mean he stayed quiet for like 30 years that's that's true if he was an egomaniac he'd be doing what what the circuits you know he'd be Peddling his, he just he just rehearsed that same story, and he would say year on year, like yeah. a, you know, thing on thing on on a stage. But you know, uh, th there's a there's a part of me that that thinks that what he did was he he had a go at it, he wanted some attention, he got attention, maybe he got the wrong kind of attention. And then he started getting embarrassed about it all because he, he wanted to start it for a, a reasonable business, and and so so tried to bury it and and set up his little science shop selling uh, <laughs> scientific supplies, and he just wanted to forget about it. But it's people like us that keep dragging him back into the conversation, and people like uh, um, uh, Corbell and uh, and Nap who who keep saying, "Come on." You know, come and do this. Uh, we've got a video coming up. There's an anniversary arriving. I'm short of some cash. You know, I mean, um, he gets pulled into it. He might not want anything to do with it. Right. Let's face it. He though. might have known it. Let's face it. Coming out and saying I worked in a secret military base and worked on a crashed alien spaceship. That's a hell of a genie to want to put back in the bottle. Mm. That that's sure. not the sort of thing you can say. Yeah, I'll just carry with my normal life after that. It's not it's just not no, possible. But it, You'd have no, to be an idiot to some, think that. Yeah, but not it you, might be him. something that you want to forget. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it we're we're living in different times now. But but when I was a kid, if you did something embarrassed, right, embarrassing, the people just the people immediately around you knew about it, and it <laughs> became a rumor in your high school. Oh, the name you know stuck. I mean? But now everyone's got a phone, everybody videos it. You know, what happens is on record and it stays on record and is very hard to erase. OK, um, it was it was a different time back in the 90s. Yeah, but I'd say the oddly enough, the exposure has made people um, has emboldened people to make fools of themselves more. Yeah, well, I mean, well, but there is, there is, You're right. uh, there's five of us on YouTube talk about some guy that might have worked on an alien spaceship that loads of people are going to see. I live on an island of 80,000 people. I know so many of them by name. So like if, if I look stupid, I look stupid to a really small community here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're, we're emboldened to do that more now. So it, that it, it does, it doesn't work for me that the, um, 
like uh, and the fact that he didn't have those avenues he could just create his own story if he wanted to and especially at the time when he came out with those interviews but it, I, I don't know from, from what i felt at the like when i found out about it when i was a kid a majority of people fucking believed him yeah you know so he's not gonna look stupid he's the he's the whistleblower Yo, know, he was the fucking alien edward snowden <laughs> yeah he was yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you you, you uh, overestimate the amount of people that believed him at the time, um, and, I, and I don't the think I do. People, the real people that believe the, the real people that don't believe it are the kind of people that you need to influence when you want a loan for for your business, and when you want to set up this and that, you know, uh, business partnerships and things like that. Mm. How are you going to get support from the rest of your country and your business community? If you're you're spouting such incredulous stories like that, if you've got George Knapp behind you, and um, the X Files has just just come out, and everybody's interested in UFOs and uh, alien abductions and crashed no, crash spaceships and Roswell, if if that happens, you don't need to go to a bank to find a money uh, to to get money for a bank loan. You can quite easily make that money. Imagine if it, imagine with the with that story. If he'd have got if he'd have got in, got in touch with Chris Carter and said like I, I said I I can be a I, I can I can be an executive producer on this on this. I work so, there. So Bob Lazar took his little interview with George Knapp in 1989, and the X Files uh, released in it looks like 1993. 1993. Yeah. Interesting. Was there ever a mention of Bob Lazar in any of the X Files? Don't yeah, think maybe. so. No, I can't remember, and I've watched no. them all. But but it had Area Fifty One out of the wazoo, yeah. didn't it? It did. A lot of triangles in that. A lot program. of triangles. <laughs> Lots of triangles. And then this weird location in this book, you guys, that this guy brings them out to. It's really weird. He says that this is where something had crashed in in New Mexico. And, and I know, you know, these crash sites pretty well. The Roswell one people visit all the time. And there's no there's no debris out there. There's nothing. You know what I mean? Tons of people have been there. But in the book, he, he blindfolds the two people and he takes them out to this X-Files scene, right, the, where they filmed the X-Files, Lee, like you're saying. And he un he unblindfolded them and told them that we were going to find some sort of material. And it was a, sp a spot where they filmed the X Files. That's so weird. Sorry, yeah, uh, Amy, if re reverse a little bit. Is this is this Bob? No, is the... this is a book called Cosmic America that came out right now. That's pretty popular. Um, and in the book, this lady, uh, she's very. Uh, she grew up, I think, Catholic, and she just kind of goes on this adventure, and she becomes friends with Jacques Vallée. And she goes and she hangs out with him a lot. She goes and hangs out with the Bledsoes. She talks to Whitley Strieber, all of these different people in our community. She even talks to Scott Brown. There's a whole chapter in the book, actually, with Scott Brown, who we know. Um, and Who's so Scott in this Brown? book, Scott Scott Brown, <laughs> the Scott Brown. I don't know who Scott Brown is. <laughs> you two do. You've been on shows with him. Oh, that's okay. Scott Brown. That's Scott Brown. God, yeah. I don't know. I thought it was somebody else go ahead i'm sorry so she meets this guy named tyler who has all of these connections with the aerospace industry just like a really eccentric interesting dude and she believes him and she she takes her and uh, her friend out here in new mexico in some undisclosed place and when the guy that she's with gets on blind photo as well he looks at the seat this uh, where they're at and he says this looks just like the x-files and the guy who took them out there is like this is where they film the x-files very weird story. You guys have to read that book. That's one of my favorite books because, you know, we all have our ufology celebrities and their talk. It, it just sucks you in when you know all the names that we know. I mean, Scott Brown's in it. <laughs> like every other. I mean, I just I, I can't put it. I couldn't put it down. It's been such a good book to read. I can't think why any extraterrestrial craft would leave any debris behind. I think if if they were visiting this planet, they would have such a good system. If some, I, 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 I think they'd have such a good system, so they wouldn't even crash. If they can travel from 
I mean, if they're coming from light years away, and it and it isn't dimensional, even if it's dimensional, I think they would have such a good system not to fucking make a mistake and hit a pile on and you know crash in somebody's backyard or you know. I mean, I don't even think that we would have the technology to shoot them down. I don't think we would either. I don't think we could shoot down a flying saucer. Some people think that about Roswell. I don't unless, think we shot down. Uh, unless it's magic and we figured out a way to get whatever it is to come down because it's some sort of... So the the whole saucer, the flying saucer, is actually sorcery. Well, is the if the, uh, the uh, encounter at the Zimbabwe school is to be believed, uh, and, and these... And it uh, is. These, and these aliens right. are are meant to be telling us that we need to be kind to our environment because our technology is destroying it. Then surely their own technology should be absolutely flawless in yeah. terms of, um, you know, so so them dropping slag or bits of um, or, or, or even being radioactive. Um, really, they really shouldn't do that. It wouldn't make sense. <laughs> I totally agree with you, Rich. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with you. Maybe that's why they're getting rid of the cows, you know, because of, the... of all the gas. But then that that uh, then you're talking about the uh, what's it? Is it the Bledsoe? Um, yeah. Uh, they they got terrible radiation. Uh, the lady got radiation sickness, didn't she? The hair came out or something like that. No, no. which one was that? I know which one you're talking about. That was the Cash Landrum. Cash Landrum, that's it. Betty Cash. That, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So, so it it there's a lot of con, um, conflicts in all yeah. of this. She tried to in the U.S. too and lost, believe it or not, even though she said that there were like six Chinook helicopters that picked up the. Uh, UFO that damaged their car and gave them radiation. They mm -hmm. wound up suing. But they lost. Anyway. Did did Bob Lazar no. ever ever and I know you didn't on camera have no. a conversation with Stanton Stanton? Hmm. Ever. A phone I'll call anything. <laughs> I don't think he did. I'm pretty sure he I didn't. have it. He didn't. No. Yeah. No. The only person that sat with Stanton was Jeremy Corbell that argued right. for Bob. That was it. That's as right. far as I know, as, but Stanton had tried to call Bob, never managed to get through to him. That conversation never... I don't know why Bob would avo avoid that conversation. You know why. Same reason that um, Elizondo won't talk to Greer, because they'll rip him apart. Rip the story apart. I want to believe Bob, though, Rich. I, I do, really too. Do. I really do. Because he's, his, his mannerisms, his com it, listening to him speak, you know, I'm buying the story. Watching him talk about it, I'm absorbing it. I'm taking it in. I'm... I, I'm 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 creating images in my mind of this weird jello molded craft, you know, that but again, my biggest problem is the shape of that craft. Why? Yeah, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, what else would it be? Square? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mark McCandless, right? He brought that this flying saucer blueprint out at the 2001 disclosure yeah. hearing. And at the yeah, that was like the big that was the moment for me when I was like, wait a second, you got a blueprint of the and I went I'm like you I went in and out on the flying saucers. I was like, yeah, I think it's real. And then I kind of went back and forth. Um, but as time has progressed, um, I definitely think that flying saucers are part of the extraterrestrial aviation arsenal. Amy, have you ever seen Flying Saucer? Um, no, but I have seen a TR-3B. Okay. Lee, you ever seen Flying Saucer? Nope. <laughs> rich? Saucer? Flying? It's possible. Another Rich. Which one? 
Me? Hmm. Both. I might have. Uh, I just can't prove it. I have video of something that's very disc-ish, but... I got a disc away. photo, too. I got a disc photo, too. Mine's video. Mine's video, too. Wait, no, is mine video? No, mine's a photo. Never mind. Well, uh... mine's in the carriage. <laughs> I once saw a single red light in the sky, uh, but that could just be Charlie Red Star. Navigates uh, navigation lights off a plane could have been anything. I, I saw a green ball. That's a that's the closest thing I've thought. I saw a green ball that went uh, over me and over my house, and then the next day I went to my uh, I went went to work, and my friend who who I worked with lives like three or four miles down the road from me. And I went in and said, you'll never guess what I saw last night. He said, it wasn't a massive green ball in the sky, was it? And he was outside his house having a cigarette at the same time I saw it. And he saw it go over his house before it headed off up to my house. That was pretty fucking weird. Was I, it I would... Sorry, slower, slower than a shooting star? Yeah, it could, because it was, it, it was really quick, as in it was there. But it, it was there long enough to watch. Cool. It was there long enough to see. And it, it was obviously it was there long enough for him to see it. Uh, three or four miles away for wow. them to, for me to see over it. If, to be perfectly honest, if he hadn't have seen it at the same time, I would have. I'd already doubt myself about it, you know. Because re realistically, I, I what I remember about it really is talking to him about it more than seeing it now. But <laughs> the uh, if um, if I was to bring him on right now, he would say he would say exactly the same thing as as I just said. It's really weird. Well, I... we've got him waiting in the wings. Here's your friend. <laughs> I've I've seen an egg in the an sky. Egg. An really? egg, yeah. It's it's on the channel and it's it oh, just before it hit your face. Yeah, hmm. The balloon thing? No, it's so it's almost see through. Um uh. and, uh, No no no. Rich, oh. there's a story behind this. So oh, okay. I, I was I, I was I was driving um Doncaster with uh, going somewhere I can't remember was going to work anyway but it doesn't matter but there was something that that was moving straight across quite fast in the sky and it was it was bright and I thought is that an airplane but then it stopped and I stopped because the tra the traffic and I thought I'm gonna I need to get this out so I had a Nokia don't ask me why I had this phone but I had it Nokia Lumia if you remember the Microsoft phones I had one of them with a terrible camera on it I literally held my my phone out the window and took a picture of it. I don't even think I had the... I didn't have Alien Addict as, as a channel back then. But I believe it's on one of my very early videos. And there's a picture. And if you zoom in on it, and I've got oh, it somewhere on my phone. It's I'm it's a, it's not in the thumbnail, though, Amy. It's, I talk about it in the video. And it is there. I will find it. But it, oh, okay. it's, it's a bubble. Um, it almost looks like a Tic Tac. But it was moving really fast. Um but I was near an airport at the time. I was near Doncaster Airport. So I thought, is that a plane? But it stopped. And it stopped literally like it and went it... into a cloud and disappeared. Hmm. Then when I, I took about three pictures, but then there's a picture of it and you can see it on one of the frames. And it looks so odd. Um, but that's the only thing. I, I've seen a, a, a couple. There's, there's one rich that I put on the Patreon. I don't know if you've seen it where... I started to film it last minute and I didn't put it on the channel because I literally have been staring at this thing for ages. And then have you ever seen a UFO and right at the last minute you thought, I need to film that. And then yeah. it just disappears. And it's. <laughs> well, you're trying to yeah, figure but... out what you're seeing, if it's worth it. Yeah, but yeah. to film it, you've got to find the worst camera in human history. <laughs> and then you've got to take a load of caffeine. So your hand shakes lots. And you have to mm -hmm. have epilepsy. Mm -hmm. I love the, the idea now of if we just keep going round and we'll keep going round pl uh, playing like UFO top trumps until one of us is like, well, I got molested by a unicorn and those horns aren't soft. <laughs> so there's there's the thing. Not many people speak about this and they don't stay on the subject for long enough of Bob Lazar taking them out to see the crafts out of the desert and the footage that was That's that important from that. That's important. That's important. He went and said, let's look at them on the base. Let's film them. Well, nobody's what? arguing that he might have worked there and he might and he might have seen um, he might have known that there were certain tests going on. But thought... does that mean that he'd seen sort of 
alien craft doesn't necessarily, you know, equate to that. Right. And it all, you know, it, it depends on direction as well. I know um, for where our airport is, uh, you can stand on the on the headland looking out looking out to sea, and the way planes come in to land at our airport, when they face on with you, you can't see the aviation lights on them. So if you, if you stand, it's, it's where our radio our, our radio station is. But if you stand there and look out to sea, you just see what appears to be like three lights coming towards you. I, I think it's all, it's always important to like n- not, you can't always see the flashy aviation lights, especially when planes are coming into land. Yeah. And, and sometimes you can get them at such an angle, even if they've got the lights flashing on that you think, mm. what is that thing there? Yeah. 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 The, the, did anybody, find i mean forget forget that bob lazar was out there filming them the footage that that was the bob lazar did anybody think that was take take lazar out of the equation you've just got these these dots in the sky do you find it impressive the footage you do amy um that's really difficult because you know after the three videos that came out in uh 2017 Everything kind of just felt whitewashed after that, unfortunately. But um, with those, due to the sources, I would I would say, yeah, quality. W- watching it, like right, there's a bunch of like really colorful lights, and you can't really tell what it is. And it, yeah, I, I don't know. It gave me an authentic feel. I liked the old VHS straight up. I knew it wasn't oh, yeah. from a VHS. So that adds a lot to me um, when it comes to me taking something in. Uh, so, yeah, from the fact that it's a VHS, you know, tape, we're not looking at something that's been Photoshopped CGI. It wouldn't it wouldn't have been possible. And the story. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say uh, there's something there. There's something there with that. Is it secret military craft that humans created? Maybe. But the, that video footage does seem spot on. It, you know, there really is this feeling like, okay, this is what it would look like in 1989 if you were filming outside a military base looking at secret craft. You know, like the footage is there. The lighting's the same as it seemed would it be. But I don't know. I'm not a footage expert. I simply like to watch. I'm, I'm a fan of the UFOs, man. And I like that UFO. I did. What about you, Rich? What about me? <laughs> the bubble is off fo- the, the footage, footage expert the footage um, expert yeah, i haven't seen it in a long time but i remember watching it thinking it was interesting i yeah, don't know I, it could I, be old it could be the beginning of the drone technology for all we know mm-hmm. that's what it reminds me of well it, i mean it's dark and it's just a light in the sky Really, I mean, it's twinkly and it, it moves a little bit. It too. looks a little bit like, I mean, it looks like you, when you zoom in on a star, but it, but with some extra bits on it. Mm. Um, I, well, I don't think it, I don't think it's very compelling at no. all. I mean, I think if anybody sent me that, I don't even know if I put it on the channel. I don't put anything that anybody sends me on the channel. Hardly ever. Send me some more footage, people. Um, I for th- this is the um elephant in the room isn't it when it comes to ufology is the um especially now when I, i'm not i don't even just mean like phones phone cameras even though essentially everyone has a reasonable camera in their pocket at all times uh, but even amateur photographers you know like the if 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 you are, have any interest in a in photography you can buy yourself a really good camera and have a very little money um, or reasonably little money, um, with the amount of people that are on the planet and the amount of technology that's around our necks and in our pockets, I, I just think that smoke and gun picture should have already been shot. There should have already been something that isn't light. I agree with that. But what if whatever it is is aware of our technology now possibly and it's had to be less um what's the word i'm looking for what i'm looking for it's got to, it's been less I'd, it's I'd cons- argue conspicuous that. Mm-hmm. yeah right. yeah 
I, I'd argue if you had if you had something that was so technologically advanced than what we are, it wouldn't give a fuck if we saw it or not. If it were if it were to take a couple of cows off us, it'd do it in broad daylight in front of the farmer. Unless yeah, we, we believe uh, them. Yeah, unless unless it it we are aware of it and it is aware of us, and maybe that there has been some sort of discussion. Yeah, we're, um, we're we're humanizing it then, though, aren't we? You're talking about yeah. something that would that would be so far advanced to us, and so many like, to the point where it would be uh, even as uh, even as intelligence. If we were to wait for um, for us to be at the technical point where we could uh, traverse star systems, you know, it's we would be unrecognizable to ourselves. So. To, to to just humanize them and stick like stick a Star Trek Prime directive on them, I think is a uh, is a bit weird. Well, maybe not a Prime directive. Maybe it's just a zoo. We we're just we're just Could ring be. fenced. We we just leave them alone. They're not there yet. Just monitor. Yeah, that's, they still, sure they that's, still, that's still mm-hmm. humanizing them, isn't it? We, we're still giving them empathy. We're giving you know it's and if if we look at just life in general, just life on this planet, yeah? Um, we seem to be the only real animal that's totally self-aware and, in that case, aware of everything else around us and how, how the other systems work in together. Um, so we seem to be an oddity. There's no there's no reason that another life form that was would develop. In fact, it probably it would probably be less likely... That it would develop in the same way we we will to have all these essentially emotions hold us back. You know, if, if we were if we were like a Borg or uh, like if if we worked more like an ant colony or a beehive, we would be much further along than we are. So the idea that these things would be that more that more advanced than what we have managed to get to could be the fact that they're not that. Old, they're not much older than us. They're just more efficient at what they do. I think they're much older than us. I think they're probably lived to be like a thousand years old. Especially when we look at the Bible and we discuss how you know some of the people in the Bible were like three hundred, four hundred years old. And I think, I think that's why right. they're less emotional. I think that's why they're less emotional. I think they look at us like a bunch of puppies just running around, like yeah, yeah, oh, let's buy this, let's do this. Mm-hmm. We're very excited. That? No, but experiencers talk about this, about how yeah. they have this interest in us because we are so lively, passionate, emotional, just like these wild little beings. So I agree with you, Lee. I think that they don't have as much emotional connection as we do at all. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one reason they don't care. They're like, yeah, let's get these cattle. Eh, let's do this. You know, yeah, we're zipping around. Hey, let's blink some lights down at it. Greer, zoop, zoop, zoop. <laughs> you know, and then, then Greer sees some lights and he's like, let's make some documentaries and you know everything turns out great yeah he's <laughs> meditating again let's freak him out <laughs> I, do see, I do see e5 all the time if i'm under the sky here's, here's something interesting <laughs> if if they're that much superior to us and we were communicating with them psychically i can understand that they might be able to understand us but for us to understand them is a completely different kettle of fish. Well, I, I think it's wonder, like screens, you know, right? Yeah, I, just... I, I, I do wonder whether would it even be possible for us to be able to mm. relate on any level or, or, or communicate to them in any meaningful way for them? Mm. Well, when you think about communicating psychically, I think what, what we all have in mind is the idea that we can all hear each other's inner monologue. Yeah, which is in English. So it's what do, what, how do we how do we work out communication out there? And do we do it like that, or is it more an emotion based thing? 
I think it's more emotional based. I think um, a lot of, you know, when people talk about having these tele telepathic experiences and you start listening to psychics and you start listening to people who kind of have maybe like a, they feel like they have a higher sense. A lot of the time this stuff is communicated like it's like an instant like they call it a download, right? Like it's an instant download or you get like an image real quick for it. And I think you can kind of feel the psychic connections you have with people who you love and care about. It doesn't necessarily have to be translated through English. I think you can just acknowledge this circuitry when you notice like when when somebody's communicating with you and you can check your emails or your something and you see that they emailed you like 15 minutes ago and you were thinking about and you don't like that stuff happens to me all the time i think it transcends language like hardcore um i don't know i feel like i've had these experiences before like i feel like i've had some telepathic communication before and i feel like it didn't have to be in english i didn't have to hear it in english um, and it wasn't something like I felt like someone was speaking to me or I was hearing voices. I was I was getting information in a different way. And a lot of people feel that I hear experiencers say that quite a bit. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Spoke. Sorry, go on. So I was just going to say, I get what you mean. I think we've all got uh, certain friends that, you, that you're around where I, I know what I have a couple of different people where I genuinely think I'm smarter when I speak to those people. It's like I think... Either either they drag me up or I drag them down, but I feel I, I I can definitely form thoughts better around certain people. It's why I come across as so stupid when I speak to Ollie. But um, the uh, the thing is, when you look at the uh, 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 abduction accounts, you get abduction accounts of people saying they hear voices in their head. They see they hear formed words. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. They hear formed words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that because I've had somebody come on my show, Sue Walker, who's talking to extraterrestrials in the mountain and their movie. There's a movie coming out. It's by not Dr. Angelay's Knight. mountain, is it? Media. It actually they interviewed Angelay. They had some of the best press conference footage I had seen in this movie. It's called um, Conscious Contact. Oh. Anyway, she was talking to aliens in the mountain. She said the same thing. It was just like full formed words. So who knows? These are just things I've heard. <laughs> I'm making it all up. I don't know. <laughs> like really, I don't know. I don't I, I know. Don't, that. Are those voices we talk about book deals? <laughs> I try. To, I don't so, know. Maybe I'm just I mean, hearing voices. You guys are right. <laughs> here's here's the thing. When it comes to to Bob, though, when when he hears about these stories, like Angela, Angela, um other people's stories i bet when he when he watches a bit of wilcock now and again or whatever i bet he thinks i don't i i, I he seems like the guy that wouldn't give any of it at the time of day you know i right. I, I i think he's is is quite he, well i hope he's a scientific person he 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 puts he puts himself across as a scientific person but yet what he describes, and I'll say it again, it is, it is, he describes it as magic. To, to quote Stephen Greer, what did, he, what did Stephen Greer say, Rich? Freak, fucking magic? Weird science, Weird science and freaking, and freaking magic. magic. No, he, said, he said fucking magic on the last he one. He did after, yeah. Yeah, it was the yeah. acronym, yeah. There was, wasn't there another acronym he had, too? Like, there were two of them. WSM, something like that, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think Bob Lazar would, would give anything the time of day when it comes to this subject other than his own the experience that he says he had right he hasn't built on he hasn't built a franchise off of it right has he ever spoke about seeing aliens has he ever spoke about seeing uh, ufo sightings since working on this craft has no. he ever spoke about anything nothing no. he no. hasn't it's either a very, very clever lie that he's got this story and he thinks, I don't break from this story. I don't add to it. I do nothing more than stick to this story. And they, they will lap it up. And this is going to be, it's going to be a time thing. You know, I'm going to have to buy my time with it. I may have to come back to this in a few years, which he has done. But again, it goes back to how much money is he actually made off this? What's the That's reason the behind this? 
How much money is I, made I, off of it? I, mean, I, I think Jeremy, t uh, in, my, in my email, the conversation, I'm pretty sure he said he didn't pay Bob a penny. Interesting. That's very yeah. interesting. Then what money did he get? What, why, you know, that's what the question really comes back down to. And Joe Rogan doesn't pay, pay people, as we know, uh, Lee. No, but, I mean, I think when Corbell moves, mouth moves, you know he's lying. Hmm. So it's, uh, and even, even that, that thing, like, if, if Corbell's there going, because I'm, I'm sure I've heard that when he says, I, he didn't pay uh, Bob Lazar a penny. Sure he didn't. It would be like, uh, and I can see him being that sort of person that would say something like that, knowing that he's he's legally right because it was the production company that paid Bob Lazar for it. Lee, uh, I could have made that up. I, he, I, I just, I think I... I no, I no, no. I think, I think I've heard it as well. I think I've heard him say it, that Bob Lazar wasn't, wasn't paid for the documentary. He did say but, it. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, w w maybe... <laughs> Would it still work if if he wasn't paid for the documentary, but he got uh, he he got he has shares in it or something like that? You know, it's I, I don't he believe he does. Yeah, I don't believe he does all that. See, the other thing is to it is it like what's he done since he supposedly worked at Area Fifty One? Because you know, life flip life life flipped upside down. Now he seems to have a fucking awfully nice house, and he seemed to set himself up with a reasonably successful. Business, business. Uh, buy, like buying and selling expensive shit, and you need a float to do that sort of thing. United Nuclear, yeah, is that what it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's the the establishment of that business alone is something that I think validates his credibility. Because a lot of people say, "Well, he couldn't have been doing this because look at his resume. This isn't the type of person that works that you would choose to work on a flying saucer." But like Lee's saying, I mean, he doesn't, he's a, he's a, you know, a rugged like individual who can do whatever he wants. And he has the intellectual capability to start this company. I mean, I know that, oh, well, he can start, you know, a synthetic lab chemical or whatever, where he sells these chemicals. But the truth is like, that's really hard to do. Those are really hard things to do to build rockets, to start your own chemical supply company, all of this stuff. I mean, it, in my own opinion, that aligns with the fact that he could have very well been chosen to work with Flying Saucers. Just the establishment of that business alone is, is interesting to me. When it comes to choosing somebody who works on a Flying Saucer, though, how, do you, how, how would one do that? I mean... You'd have to look at how this flying saucer. The best man for the job would be how this, what they specialize in. What did Bob specialize in? Well, he was at uh, the NASA Propulsion Laboratory at Caltech. He was doing things there. And, you know, the NASA uh, Rocket Propulsion Laboratory at Caltech knows what's up. Um, we also have information from Jim Goodall, who recently said, I think in the last few months, that he was sitting there with some official guy who threw Bob's W-2 to the shredder. You know, like, I mean, it's real. Like people, I think you can, in 1989, find these documents, rip them up, go to a gun to his classmates and be like, you need to shut the F up, okay? You don't talk about this or I delete you, okay? And then the internet came and I think, I think it's easy to rip up a diploma and say it never existed. I think it's easy to get people to be quiet so they can make more money in different ways and so that they can keep hiding things so that they can hide one of the greatest secrets of humanity. They'll do anything. They'll, they'll kill people for that. They'll, they'll do things to shut them up. Or somebody who knows all that that has done dodgy shit so you've got something against him, like like we know Rob, uh, Rob, <laughs> Bob. Um, he worked at a brothel. He he, he owned a brothel. Whatever he did with the brothel, did he, was it? A, did he own a brothel? He was pandering for prostitution. Okay. So he was just getting right. a lady friend for the night, and they were exchanging services for money. So if you no, wants... he owned a brothel. He owned a brothel. Yeah. No, I don't think he did. He, okay. Oh wait, no, he did. No, you're right, Rich. No, I take uh, it back. Maybe no. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And owning a brothel? Yes. I got it. I got it. Okay, yeah. I'll go. I look think he owned two. He's what in the UK we would say balls deep in it. Yeah. <laughs> I. But was it okay? I'm gonna be quiet. No, but here's the thing, and 
this is this has just kind of dawned on me. If a guy has a bit of a dodgy past, and but he's he's very knowledgeable, you know. He he he, know, he knows how to get things done when it comes to this type of subject. You think this guy can do the job? But you've got something on this guy. This guy is a little bit, he's a bit loose, you know. Bring him in. Because we've got something on this guy. We may, there may be other things they had on him. So he let hung work, out at Brothels. Let, let, let him work on the flying saucer. He says he hung let out him, at Brothels. Let him work on it. Well, here's the keys of question then. Uh, and this isn't really two or four, Bob, but where are the rest of them? Where's the where's the, the where, where's the next whistleblower? Where's the where's the next person that's left Area Fifty One that's come out and said I've done this? Mm-hmm. So there's there's obviously some sort of uh, procedures in place to make sure that that doesn't happen, you know. And I I don't believe that um, an NDA, for instance, would be good enough for that because you would still get you'd get the Reddit posts, you get something, there'd be, you know, there'd, there'd be something. You you look how um, the old letter on 8chan and stuff that that took off. You know, if, if someone if, if someone is dedicated enough to do it, regardless of how much credibility they have behind it, they can make people believe it. So where's the guy that's managed to get out of Area 51 with a single photograph S4. over all these years? Maybe the photographs are coming, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Let's be optimistic. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Come but on, it, cheer up. But no, but it does not. <laughs> not in your lifetime. Not in your lifetime. <laughs> but it does not seem weird. What, what, what have we got? We've got. Yeah, it does. Um, I agree we've got, completely. Uh, we've got Bob Lazar, and we've got a caller from uh, into uh, Art Bell, which it turns out Rich can do an e- excellent impression of. Oh yeah, yeah uh, that call here. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. who does? He does. You do. You do a good, really impersonation of, of that guy. No, the oh, Area Fifty One guy. We we had you and oh, you and oh, you and Lee. We had, yeah. No, we had we had you and Lee do it. Do uh, the call, didn't we? Oh, the caller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but that's yeah, all, you... that, that that's it. That's all we have from Area Fifty One, and one of them is probably complete bollocks, and the other one possibly bollocks. I'm going to put it out there. Do any of you believe, Bob? I do. I want to. I, I know you do, Amy. <laughs> I know. Just wanted my opinion to be heard. I do. I believe in Bob. <laughs> no. I, w- I want to be all of it. Every single story of UFOs and aliens and goblins and fucking fire badges. Goblins. I want to believe every fucking one of them. I'm not talking well, about I, goblins. I think, I think Bob's a very quiet, lonely guy that just wanted a bit of attention. It's as simple you, as that. You you don't believe in one eye out of Rich? No. <laughs> I like Rich's response. No. <laughs> no. Did you ever no. believe him? Uh, I I think I went through a phase of wanting to, but too many holes in what he says. I went so. through a phase of wanting him. What? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Here, here's here's a question for you, there, Let's go Rich. On, on, the, on the on the back of that, it's the rock. Do you think Jeremy Corbell believes him? I think Jeremy Corbell believes anything that that can be monetized. I I genuinely think, but Corbell can convince himself to believe it. I think because he he comes across as so excited, regardless of what you think about him as a person, he speaks about what he's doing so passionately. I uh, in the same way as when you get a bad musician, a bad musician and a bad band will think they write the greatest songs every song. Yeah, um, and I I think he does the same thing. I think he one hundred percent believes what believes Bob because he's involved with it. There's an er- there's an element of uh, uh, Dunning Kruger about him, definitely, um, hmm. uh, but also what I would suggest is that if I was working in a in a sales environment, if I was a sales manager, I w- I would hire Corbell because I just know that he would oh, completely believe whatever he needed to do, 
uh, and completely say whatever he needed to say to get the money back. I I I just watched that his selling practices. That's all. He's a great salesman. Lee, hmm? are you are you a believer? And Bob, I don't think yeah. so. I'd want to. Do you, and do you know what? I I think up until the Rogan interview, I I might have edged towards yes. I might have said like the inconsistencies, um, but like the I I think it's perfectly reasonable that his qualifications could be could have been deleted, especially back then because you know you you're talking written records. You know we we haven't got things completely like edged. I mean, say saying even now things aren't permanently edged on the internet. We get whole people deleted now, let alone just their qualifications. Um, but I still find it odd that when he was given the biggest platform that he's ever been on and that he had a movie to promote with the producer migraine. of that. No, not the migraine. I'll, t- I'll take the migraine. That could, that could just be a bit of nerves because he, all of a sudden he's speaking to, what, 10 million people or whoever it is that week. Um, it's Antarctica. It's the ex- excavation of the sources that uh, he just thought he he's gone in there thinking oh, I've said the same shit for all these years. I just I need something else. I just need to. And he just snuck in because Antarctica is a proper bit of conspiracy spice, isn't it? He, and he just peppered it up a little bit. If he hadn't peppered it up, I probably would believe him. But he come with the man, come with the hour, and he he he, he had to come up with something extra. Could have even been Rogan. It could have even been Rogan saying, look, I've watched all this. What else can you give me? What else can you give me to make this a better show? So, so I'm going to ask you on something on the back of that then, Lee. Uh, uh, similar to what I asked Rich. Do you believe that Rogan believed him? Or do you I believe, think... I believe, I believe Rogan believed that. And uh, uh, if, if you remember, even, even during that period, he said um, he, he was told by someone... That there was going to be high definition pictures of something released, then he had he went down that thing of having um, what's his name, your man, which was abducted. Fucking, I forgot Travis his name, Travis. Travis Walton, who is a fucking liar. And then you had uh, Bruce Big, uh, uh, Robert Robert Bigelow, Robert Bigelow, Bruce Robert Bigelow is the male jiggler, right? Was Robert, yeah, yeah. Bigelow, yeah. Bigelow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did not enjoy that interview. No, not, not, because... not because of Joe. What I thought was amazing is, because I don't think he was lying either, the amount of money he's put into this, and he knows absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, I think he knows something. Oh, I, I, I don't think he's a good enough liar. I don't think he's a good enough liar to sit there and not accidentally give an impression that he knows something. Um, and it was after that, Rogan is essentially fucking abandoned, apart from the odd, like, the odd conversation about it. I, it's, given the fact that he's, he's even got a fucking spaceship uh, uh, abducting someone in his new logo, you know, you know, in the in this Texas studio, he has abandoned the subject, and I think he's abandoned the subject because he thinks what he's been told is now bullshit. Yeah, mm. when he did his show, uh, Joe Rogan yeah. questions everything. He said mm-hmm. everything uh, was bullshit. Everything yeah. and the people are weird and freaky and and they're guys who don't get laid and they're just weird. Everybody's just weird, he said. Bunch of fucking dudes who just want to go out and find Bigfoot and. That's totally wrong. I'm a chick. What is he? Doesn't know anything. It's not a bunch sure, of dudes. Sure, sure. it is. I'm it's ninety percent dudes. <laughs> That's why. No, you... I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> one out of five. So you're ten percent, or one out of five. No, but you're one hundred percent right. I was just messing around. I know. I agree with you. I agree with you. But you know, when he went out Bigfoot hunting with those guys, there weren't any women with those guys. So you know, he was out with dudes. Not a lot of women bug bug fitters. Yeah, bug fitters. Big Squatch footers. Squatch, Squatch hunters. Yeah. Rich, I, I think I so know corrupt. the. Un- I think I know the the answer that you're going to give, but where where, <laughs> I, where where I haven't asked you since you've watched the the new tapes, listen to the new tapes. Well, watch them with third phase. But where did you where's your head lie when it comes to Bob Lozano? Who are you talking to? I've already asked. I've already asked Rich N. I'm, ask, I'm asking. 
Rich G. Well, I didn't know. You didn't say. You just said, so what do you think? I didn't know you were asking. So what do I think about Bob Lazar now? Nothing. Nothing's changed. I don't believe that he actually worked at S4. I think he worked in a place that was set up to look like maybe S4 as a social experiment. And I think the whole thing just got a little convoluted and maybe a little out of hand. Because if they wanted to kill him, they would have. You don't just open up his car doors and his trunk and leave his wallet and Uzi on the front seat. Just, oh, we know you're there. You know, it's so stupid. The whole thing's stupid. They don't miss. They're going to take you out. They're going to kill you. It's done and over with. They don't They don't make those mistakes. He'd disappear and he'd never come back. Yeah. Who I, carries an Uzi 9 millimeter in the, in the car? Bob Lazar, Bob, the recluse, yeah. the guy who worked at S4. Is that an American thing? Do you guys carry Uzi? No. No, I just, some people have them and they like carry to AK shoot them. <laughs> Amy, I know you've got one, don't lie. I've, um, uh, I, I've never shot a gun, but yeah, I do. I am armed. There's a lot of jokes <laughs> running that. around in the sky right now. <laughs> so Rich, I'm going to put you on the spot. So I've asked, I've asked, uh, I asked Rich if he believes, um, if, um, Corbell believes Bob Lazar. I've asked, um, Lee if he, if he believes that um, Joe Rogan believes Bob Lazar. So I'm going to ask you, so Third Face and Moon put the, put the tapes out. Do you, do you think Third Face believe Bob Lazar? No. I know they don't. Oh. I'm quite shocked by that. Interesting. <laughs> I'm shocked by that too. Yeah, Please tell us what more. I remember, they, I think they did tell me that they don't believe he worked there. Wow. I'm not sure now, but now you guys are making me feel like I'm forgetting. <laughs> but I'm really, I think I'm right. I, th I don't think they believe he did. And what, I'll, what I'll do, say I'm 80% uh, sure about what, that. Do, what, do, you, do you think they believe what you believe that he, that he, no, they, you, think I don't, they, you think that they think he's a liar? Something's not right. I think that's, it just doesn't make sense, I think is what they said. Wow. It's powerful. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I hope oh. I'm right. <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm gonna get beat up. You're gonna. I, I, I'm sorry, Rich. You're gonna tell me off to after. Third face is gonna ring Rich tonight and go. What did you say that for? Bob Lazar is real. I'm on Team Lazar, Rich. You know what? Yeah, even even the idea. The more I, I think about this, the, even the idea that it's real is ridiculous. Look at what. The uh, look at what the world does to, polit to to dissidents. You know, it's we we spoke. We, I can't remember why we mentioned them last week, but we we brought up um, uh, Julian Assange. You know, I mean that guy had to hide in an embassy for years. Now, you know, now he's uh, in a maximum security prison in the UK. Um, it it doesn't work. You don't you don't get to piss the government off. Right. I I agree unless what Rich G <coughs> said. Um, I agree it, it, that that would be the case unless this is on purpose and this is he's he he was put in place to do hmm. exactly this job. That's what you I know said. Pro, you know I'm a fucking proponent of blue beam and there's a lot there's a bit of me wonders whether yeah. Everything we've been fucking doing, everything we've been reading and watching and thinking about has been a plan that has been in place for decades. Until we need to do we... a Blue Beam show. We do. Well, Lear, John, Lear equals aviation, right, Rich? Goof on? Equals Bob Lazar is the son. Right. Like there's, we believe there's an aviation company, aerospace. Is it, I don't know much about this company, but there's obviously a connection there. Like, was, right? I mean, that appears to be the case. I think so. But it's uh, past my uh, allotted time here. It's two hours, four I, minutes. And I was rich. That's why I was wrapping it up. Um, oh, I didn't know you were. I'm sorry. You couldn't, you, could you not see the hint there? You know, when I'm asking <laughs> you the your final thoughts on Bob mm -hmm. Lazar. I don't. My know. word. I don't know what you just said now. I was just about to get onto the subject of people 
go head on in the description. This is me and Corbell. Get yourself a little t-shirt. You don't have to buy that one. You can buy any of them. This one, uh, that was an extra large that I was wearing there. That one there. Very comfort. And Jeremy, uh, he's very comfortable in it too, he said. Mm. They've totally <laughs> just had sex, haven't they? Oh my gosh. It looks like it. <laughs> and I would believe it with Jeremy, yeah. He'd be he the bear. The all three. Oh, ways, huh? <laughs> which which one? Which I I think I think Jeremy would be the like the, the man of the relationship. <laughs> you need to slow down. That's a little bit too rough, Chief. Bob's married, man. I don't know. And yeah, he, Bob's taken. Oh, <laughs> and he'd film Bob's everything. Hot off the market. He? It's gone. Oh, he'd want to film everything. Multiple cameras. Ugh. I, I will motion. say, that, I will. Well, that's say. what he was doing at the brothel. That's what he was trying to get hooked up for them back in 1989. The internet just came out. Al Gore invented it, and they were going to start the pinnacle streaming service. Somebody, somebody that can that can actually do proper research and has an attention span and won't start thinking of like daffodils and butterflies. If I start trying to do it, needs to look into whether there's any chance the Bob Lazar brothel was like one of the honeypot type brothels that the CIA were using. Mm. Like Operation Midnight Climax and stuff like that. Somebody yeah. needs to go and look at look at that. Yeah, certain yeah, think, islands. Uh, you know. Rich like Cambian know about that. That'd be something that he would probably like to get stuck into. Mm. Operation Black Hole. Seal Island. <laughs> Do you know something? Just before we go, I, I would I would love the opportunity, and uh, you probably would never come on here, but I think Bob, it would be great to see him go on some channels that are gonna ask him the questions that other channels won't ask him. I mean, I say other channels. He's he's literally, I've seen him on about three interviews. About three interviews he's been on. Joe Rogan. Secure Team Ten and what and, and was the one other recently? Joe Rogan, Secure Team Ten, the tapes, the tapes. That's why the tapes are such a big deal. No, I right? think it's just Joe Rogan and Secure Team Ten. No, the there's two. another. There's yeah. two. There's more. one. Well, was it's it Jeremy King? Corbell, the Jeremy George, Corbell was documentary. It was, yes, it was. It was Larry King. Is it Larry? He was King? A, oh, I think he was, was. him at, with no, Corbell. No, I think it was King. Stanton Friedman. No. No, 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 it was it was Larry King. You're right. I'll it was it Larry was. King. It was Larry King. You were okay. you were definitely right with that, Rich. Yeah, three mm. interviews that I've seen him with. Rich. I say recently, but a few years ago. Um, right. It would be great to see him go on on his own. And this is no disrespect to Jeremy or anything like that. I'm just saying, let the guy go in and he's, he doesn't need anybody to hold his hand. Maybe he, he does. does. Maybe, mm, maybe he does. He, does. he doesn't... Sh- I don't think he has the connections. Like, you know, he knows how to do all that stuff and set it up. Corbell probably did everything for him. Corbell's basically been his agent. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. And his lover. Mm, that definitely his lover. Yeah. They they were talking about pole shifts, I heard, too. <laughs> well, on my it's, note, it's, 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 it's the mud flood you've got to watch out for in that situation. Polar shift, that's a big deal. <laughs> It's huge. <laughs> I, I'm worried. <laughs> Rich Giordano about to it? leave, it, about to leave the show to do his own show. What is your show going to be on tonight? Is that the thumbnail behind you? It is about the elite media, and we get no justice because they control everything that comes out of the Pentagon. I believe that you know that, that's how it's run. Now we've got this elite media. Nobody has to be. Uh, you know, it's they're all integrated in through the rich, the famous, and uh, the the people who have a lot of money that can make stories happen or make them not happen. Yep, we're living in a in a UFO world where everything is scripted, and uh, we saw that with Lou Elizondo and the other four people that were doing it for a year and a half straight. So I want to talk about that a little bit. When's it on? Yeah, Is it an hour? An hour away? Two hours? Uh, it's an hour and 51 minutes away. Awesome. Awesome. I, I still check. have to get some things set up, you know, meditate, float, and then eat. In, yeah. in the, not in that order. But thanks and, for asking. Thanks for having me on. A lot of fun. You guys are great. 
always welcome. I know. You anyway. No, I and, you know, but I was you got, you're great. We're, yeah, so happy to be here. No, Amy, I know. Amy. Why would you be? Who? You, you had a show today, which I missed because <laughs> I was at work. Um, yeah. But you're doing the day shows for the UK, are you? I am. Yeah, about noon your time. I go live Monday through Friday unless it's an American holiday. And it's just been really fun and effective. And we're doing it every day. So come over, subscribe, hang out, guys. Every day, people go check out Alien Girl 111. She is in the description. Thank you. I, I just like calling you just Alien Girl. I did, prefer it. Did somebody take it. Alien Girl? Mm, I don't know. No, not really. Not really. You know, is, I is one 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 it. is one one your lucky number? Yes, we've talked about this. One 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 is my lucky number, um, I knew that. I and that. it's also like an angel number. Um, oh. Kind of means you know, and I also uh, just I just like the idea of it looking like a screen name because I feel like I'm kind of retro in this field, <laughs> just watching all of the shows and, and taking everything digitally, like, and all the screen names, and I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. I think it's clever. Whatever. <laughs> I think it's cool. <laughs> Go check out Alien Girl, people. It's Thank in the description you. Thank below. you for letting me come, Ollie. Thank you. You're, you're, you're welcome. Uh, Rich Northwood, my friend, you don't have a channel, but thank no. you for joining us. I no appreciate problem. that, my friend. As always, you are you are very much a part of this channel, and and Lee, you old devil, you, you, uh, we are going both me and you, me and you, me and your good self are going on mm -hmm. the, the, the Josh and Artemis show uh, on on Sunday. Um, oh, actually, Rich, you're invited too. No, yeah, 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 they invited you. They, they didn't write. Did I? Did, I, Rich, I think you've been on. They Rich, hate Steve. me. They don't do they want hate? me. They don't they like me. They, they hate like me too. They love you. They love you. No, they really don't. Oh, no, no, they do. They definitely it's do. okay. I know every single person here hates me too, and I love you for oh, it. Oh, my God. I'll talk to you when I get home, Amy. That, okay. that guy. <laughs> and it was nice. It's nice having a woman's <laughs> point of view other than Lee's. So it was guy. fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, just glad, I'm just glad we all got to talk a little bit Did about we? everything yeah. going on. Did we? We did. We did. Oh. And thank you, Silent Bob, for the super chat. I appreciate that, my friend. Um, Lee, what's going on? When's the, when's the next the next the little session? Next war room. Uh, you, need to, you need to get if, 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 Rich, if Rich if Rich yes. is doing yes. stuff like that. Yes. Because you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. No, yeah, we don't idea. want to talk I'd about like, it here. I would like Rich to come on the war, war room. And talk about stuff that he can't talk about his youtube channel um if you'd like rich to. northwood no you rich goof on rich <laughs> oh okay yeah. <laughs> the uh yeah but i'm looking forward to going on the um uh artemis and josh podcast josh and artemis podcast youtube oh fuck i fucked this haven't i um yeah but come, come and subscribe to my podcast i am in talking to at the moment about getting James Dallingpole on the podcast, which would be a pretty cool guest for me. So you should come and listen to that. Good hours, mate. And Cindy, thank you for the final super chat of the night. Great panel, great chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, people. Awful self-promo. <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah, no, great, great panel, great chat. And I'm saying myself, awful self-promo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tim, nice at it, Tim. Just, just look for Musty Audio as a podcast. It's, it's really good. Yeah, it's a beautiful podcast. Oh, and and your TikTok because you, you. Oh yeah, to TikTok's a, a TikTok. my biggest social media platform now, which is weird. Oh. So yeah, come come follow my Twitter TikTok. I think it's at a total shunt, which is unfortunate now. But yeah, I think it's at a total shunt on TikTok. Come find me, Rich. You, Rich, you like one of those. Um... <laughs> Not that I've watched them, but you know those uh, live girls that have them little buzzy things, and somebody presses a button, and you just like kind of like grunted. Then, like someone had pressed a, a, a button that was in your anus. Oh. <laughs> uh, that, well, that, that, that's, rich, that's rich going. Oh my god! Just let me go and eat, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a little cranky now. Yeah, go on, fuck off. Oh. <laughs> no, good you... night, God. Go, right. I am. Good night, God bless people. Mind the bugs, don't bite. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Good night. I love you.
Bye-bye. Bye.